Hello and a warm welcome and welcome back to the final day of climbing here this weekend for the British Speed, Lead and Paraclimbing Championships hosted by the British Mountaineering Council and GB Climbing. This championship marks a welcome return to Edinburgh, the city that has previously hosted the IFSC Lead and Speed World Cup. Here we are at Raffo, the largest and only climbing centre in the UK with international standard competition walls for lead and speed. And we kick things off today, I'm very excited to say, with the paraclimbing follow finals, and that will be followed by the senior and veteran lead finals. I'm Mike Langley, and I'll be guiding you through all of the action this weekend. Alongside me, very pleased to have ex-GB athlete Hannah Smith. Hannah, great to have you back in the commentary booth. An amazing day's climbing yesterday, and all obviously more to come with the paraclimbing and uh, the vets finals later on this afternoon. Absolutely, we had a great day yesterday with the power climbing and the lead climbing qualification in the morning and in the evening we had a very exciting speed final that was over before it really started, wasn't it? It was so quick. Um, but lots of really good runs from the speed climbers, a few personal bests um, and then the lead semi-final was an incredible watch with some very close calls for some climbers actually. Yeah, it was really tight to get through to the finals. Um, so just to give you a rough idea of the schedule for today, over the next hour or so, we'll have the various paraclimbing categories. We'll be starting with the RP1 and the AL1 categories, followed by RP2 and B1. After that, we'll move into the centre of the venue here at Raffo for the AU categories. That's AU3, AL2, AL2 again um, for the females, and then RP3 men, RP3 women, finishing out with the AU2 for the females. There'll be a short break after that, and around 11.15 we'll get underway with the female and male veteran categories, followed by the male and senior senior categories, and we are crowning British champions in all of those categories today, so pretty big day out for a lot of people at Raffo. So we will be seeing lead climbing all of today, so if you are new to the sport, lead climbing is all about height on the wall, endurance and route reading. Athletes will be tied into a rope. The paraclimbers will be mostly tied into two ropes. We'll get into the weeds of that a little bit later on. They climb one at a time for their category on overhanging routes, and generally it's a six minute time limit. It's a big wall here with just six minutes to climb to the top. The athlete who reaches the highest point wins the round, and we are looking for podium positions here, here this morning. Competitors will be able to preview the routes today. They are in a collective isolation zone at the moment, and they will come out and they'll be introduced to us here in the arena and they'll have a six minute observation time for them to have a good look at the route before they head back into that isolation room and they get called out one by one for their final climbs of the weekend. Hannah, we will be starting with the paraclimbing categories. There's quite a few different categories and we're gonna do our best to work everybody through all the various categories as we see in the arena here, just people warming up or generally enjoying a bit of a climb and getting themselves ready to watch the big show. For the paraclimbing categories, um, starting with the RP1 and then uh, RP1 for female and then AL1 for male. They're going to be on the left-hand side. And um, the routes, Hannah, you've climbed here, you've won competitions here, looking pretty impressive. Definitely. Um, super long endurance routes here at Ratho, um, which these climbers may or may not be used to. Many of them have competed here before. Um, so might be familiar, but there are a lot in the paraclimbing finals of first-time competitions here. So this should be a really exciting experience for them. Yeah, paraclimbing is really growing, and events like these really help to inspire people, get them involved in the uh, various competitions that happen around the country. Um, yeah, this is one of the biggest, biggest there are, really. British championships in the various paraclimbing categories and an immense set of routes in front of them. two main facilities here at Raffo for the competition. There's the far left hand side which was the uh, original competition wall and that's where the bulk of the paraclimbing action is going to happen to begin with on the left hand side. Then we'll be working into the middle. There's four routes currently up in the middle of the centre here. That's got some of the para categories on it and the veteran and senior categories. That's what you can see right to the right hand side of your screen there. And this this wall in the centre, it's um, it's got various elements to it, but generally steepness is the is the word that you would generally use for this wall. 
Yes, so this wall gradually gets more overhanging as you climb higher. Um, the wall is actually um, movable in that you can make it more or less overhanging. Um, they've actually chosen one of the slightly more vertical angles of this wall for this competition, which has its benefits, um, but also does make the routes a little bit longer and feels like you're having to climb a lot higher rather than climbing out the way onto the overhang a little bit more. So yeah, no easy job for our climbers today. Yeah, we saw up to 60 moves yesterday, right up the centre of the wall at the moment, the green route with the yellow volumes you can see just there, tops at, at, out at around hold 51, so that's 51 moves, um, which is, which is about right really I would say for this angle you could easily weave them and make them absolute beats but we do have to remember that they have just a six minute time um, allowance time only does become a factor if there is a tie and so we don't generally see it coming down to time but hopefully it will be about who gets the highest on these routes and it's it's, uh, it's definitely not a race like we saw yesterday no um, time rarely comes into play in lead climbing as you say unless there is a tie but it may be something these climbers are thinking about if they're not used to climbing on walls of this height they may opt to climb a little bit faster just because they're not used to having to pace themselves on this length of route and um, so i would be surprised if we didn't see some climbers setting off quite quickly today yeah climbing quickly to make sure they don't get timed out on the route if they do run into the full six minutes the judges big judging team here volunteer judges you can see on your screen at the moment they will be keeping an eye on those clocks and they will call the athlete off of the wall head judge there in the center of the screen freddie nash from the project climbing center down in the southwest running a team of judges and volunteers to make sure that all these categories are kept in check make sure the rules are adhered to throughout the morning here we will be getting a few insights to some of the runners and riders some of the key players in this event get them involved get them over here to the contribution of a few words it's amazing that people an event like this really does take Athletes are just being introduced to the crowd here. Just past 10 o'clock in the morning now, two minutes past 10 in the morning, the crowd here at Raffo slowly building. Hannah, we love to talk about conditions. Good conditions for the power athletes today, slightly cooler than yesterday, but still fairly warm. Yes, definitely warm, but compared to the conditions they had yesterday, which were really hot, really humid, and I do think we saw in especially the lead and speed finals last night that that did um, hinder some people's performances. Um, not quite as hot today, but um, still a bit warmer than people would like for September in Scotland. <laughs> the locals, locals outside of the climbing arena definitely enjoying the, the late summer. The various athletes get introduced to the audience here. We will be starting with the RP1 female category and the AL1 male category on the left-hand side of the arena. It's a very exciting time for the power athletes at the moment. I was speaking to Zoe, who goes to all their competitions with them earlier, and she told me that they are actually currently awaiting the decision on whether power climbing will be included in the LA 2028 Olympics and that decision should come in the next few months um, so they'll all be eagerly awaiting to see if they will get a chance to compete in the Olympics. Um, many of the athletes here today have medals on the international stage um, especially in Bern um, only a few weeks ago. Um, so yeah I think these guys will be very motivated at the moment and um, it's a very exciting time for the sport. Absolutely, as we go into the observation phase now, on the left hand side of the arena on the grey wall, categories observing over on that side are RP1 female, AL1 male, RP1 male, RP2 male, B1 male, and AU2 female.
B1 athletes there, route reading via the sight guide. Sight guide talking them through every individual move of the route. You see this a lot in the B categories, using the sight guide to talk them through the individual moves. The partnership there is absolutely critical. A trusted partner to talk you through the various sequences of the route. And then a lot of the time they will use a sight guide during the climb, either via headset talking to um, a microphone and earpiece or sometimes we've seen the old-fashioned method of shouting shouting the beta from the floor that tends to be a pretty useful way of doing it as well incredible skill incredible teamwork best to talk you through the various categories as they come out on the wall. AL1 will be one of the first categories, the seated category. Chest down, impaired movement. You can see Will, Kieran in that category. We're just joining the British team and Kieran his first competition. We are in the six minute observation period. Time to go back to the isolation area. They're not allowed to watch each other climb. They want to steal the beta off one another. So you have, if you have just joined us, we are live here at Raffo in Edinburgh for the British Lead Speed and Paraclimbing Championships. Mike Langley and Hannah Smith here with you. Let's nice gentle start before we ramp things up at the start of the morning's action. We'll be live over the next three or so hours, working our way through the paraclimbing events. Short break after that before getting into the veteran and male and female senior events. Yeah, setting team here last night, working away from 9 in the morning until 2 a.m. last night, trying to prepare the routes here, ready for the competition. A big thank you to the organizers and the route setters for doing that last night. I was very much in bed by then. So. I was too. Very <laughs> long day for the route setters, um, setting all these routes throughout the week, but then having to put them up after qualifiers yesterday, uh, the semi-finals routes were set. And then after semi-finals finished around nine o'clock last night, the setters had to then come and put all these finals routes together for the para and the senior and veteran league categories as well. So uh, pretty big job for my setters last night. And I imagine they're all pretty tired. <laughs> Yeah, I asked if a few of them wanted to jump into the commentary position and they sort of barely even recognised who I was to be honest, they were just sort of looking so tired. But they'll be very excited about this, it's their, their creations that are on the wall here, they want to see some good climbs, some try-hards and ultimately a good set of results. This event is hosted by the British Mountaineering Council and GB Climbing, along with the Raffo Arena. over the loudspeaker there, 30 seconds left of this observation period. Have the guys deciding they've seen enough and they're heading back already. This observation period, Hannah, you've been through it a few times. You tend to kind of maximise every last second. Yeah, you quite often see actually some athletes being dragged away um, by the officials and they're still looking at the wall as they're walking away and things just to try and retain as much of um, the route as they can. Um, certainly if they know they're going to be in isolation a long time and some of these athletes will be. Um, not so important if you are coming out in five minutes time. Um, 
but yeah, I think maximising um, your time to look at rest positions, um, where you would maybe want to chalk up, where you'd want to take a breather, maybe areas you would like to qu climb a little quicker, um, yeah, and talking to all the other contestants as well, see what they think about the route. Many of these contestants will be talking to each other in isolation about these routes as well, saying, oh, what hold came after um, that black volume, or what hold was the second to last hold. Um, and yeah, they are pretty helpful to each other, and it's definitely a social sport, um, regardless of where, who you're competing against. You're always trying to discuss the routes and help each other, and I think the climbers tend to get more benefit out of speaking to other climbers rather than just keeping that information to themselves. So the B layers are ready, route setters have done their job, judges are ready, and just athletes are preparing themselves in the isolation zone now, which is off to the far right hand side of this arena. Sort of low 20 degrees Celsius in here at the moment, humidity not too bad, slight breeze coming through the incredible venue here, it's based in an old quarry, the height of the tent is in ridiculous. Um, that's it makes for some slightly weird conditions for climbing, some dampness in the air, but the doors are open, slight breeze coming through. Hopefully pretty good for climbing. Definitely a few degrees cooler than last night for the semi-finals. Definitely preferable to climb in the morning. It's not so bad just now. It doesn't feel too hot. Um, it's definitely not cold. Um, but I do imagine we'll see it getting slightly warmer, slightly more humid as the day goes on, certainly for the senior lead finals, which I think are last. Um, the conditions, I think, will be drastically different to what they are now. I imagine many of these competitors are used to that, though. Uh, many of them are internationally competing climbers, and most of the international competitions are during the summer in fairly warm climates. Um, so I doubt it's going to be something they experience before. Yeah, absolutely. They will compete with what's in front of them, try and put those elements to the side, go out there and have a solid battle. That's what it's all about here. British Championships comes around once a year for lead. A lot of the athletes put a big effort to get here, travelling from all over the country. Head route setter there on the right hand side of the screen, Yan Junu. He's the head route setter for the veteran and senior categories. First competitor announced the current RP1 female, Campbell Plant. And Kieran Lofts is going to be climbing alongside in the AL1 male category. So female RP1 is categorised as limited range and power, 1, 2 and 3 are under the RP, number 1 is most impaired. So first climbers on the wall here for finals day at the British Championships. So first look at this monstrous purple and black volume route, sort of snakes gently from right to left to begin with. And then now at this stage the route really starts to kick in. Two competitors in this category, Lucy Keyworth will be out next. Had an absolute journey this route, if the wall wasn't long enough as well, the route sort of started it low and right, big traverse up and left to start with. 
Yeah, they're definitely cramming in as many moves as they can quite early on in this route. It, you see it zigzags right to left quite a lot. Um, so the climbers end up doing an awful lot more moves um, than they would if the route goes straight up. So actually, um, Campbell's probably done a lot, quite a lot of moves already. So it is just Campbell on the wall on their own at the moment. AL1 male category will start shortly just to the right of Kieran. little sequence here Getting through this lower large triangle fairly decent hold up and right good effort there from Campbell Plant just powering out there and looking pretty tired actually she had done a lot of moves to get to that point um, and yeah, this route's actually quite confusing looking. Um, I'm struggling to read it from the ground. It definitely isn't straightforward. Um, lots of decisions to make up there on the wall and the longer you take to make those decisions, the more and more tired you're getting. Um, definitely difficult. She looks very happy though. Campbell pretty happy with that, good effort. That's where they were climbing, just on the left-hand side of the arena there purple route with the black volume see the rope swing and these competitors do use two ropes so it's a bottom rope and a top rope that just helps with big swings out from the wall because there's very overhanging walls here lower rope just controls the swing when they do come off and the top rope is there for safety secured to that Lucy Keyworth coming out next in the RP1 category. Kieran will be joining us shortly. Just have a few issues with his harness, so he'll be coming out in a second. Lucy Keyworth join us though in the RP1 category. Lucy has competed internationally. Um, she's also on the GB canoeing team, so multi-sport athlete. Yeah, that's good to see. See her using liquid chalk there, um, something we've not really discussed yet actually, but um, liquid chalk um, has alcohol in it, so you rub the liquid onto your hand and then the alcohol will evaporate, leaving a really nice and dry layer of chalk on your hands. Definitely ideal in warmer conditions, um, but yeah, she also has a chalk bag on and will be chalking up regularly throughout the route. Lucy preparing ourselves to get onto the start of the route. Two B two B layers ready. Lucy just having a quick read of the route there before she gets on. Always good to re-familiarise yourself with the route you're about to climb. Confident start from Lucy with the lower section. You can see how the route starts really low and right and then starts to essentially traverse its way up to the left. He's pumping out the tunes already. Some sort of like 90s nightclub in here already for the start of a Sunday morning in a rural Edinburgh. Lucy making a good start. She's moving very confidently but steadily up this route, taking her time, making sure she doesn't make any mistakes. 
definitely good to sort of feel your way up a climb like this when there are a lot of different options and a lot of different holds. And the purple holds do actually blend in with the black volumes quite a lot, so it is hard to sometimes see um, how good it is. Yeah, so, Lucy, yeah. just getting support there. Sorry to interrupt, Hannah, just for just trying to get that right leg up onto that volume. Crowd just seems to have raised her game slightly there, just as she started to struggle slightly. Trying to power up to that next move now. Come on, Lucy. Really strong climbing from her there. That's a really big move for quite low down on this route, but she handled that really well. Yeah, that was great work, great support. It was really good to see the crowd getting right behind her. She started to struggle slightly there, but is pushing on now. Just getting to the section where we saw Campbell struggling a little bit. Lucy just put her hand out on that black volume as well to see if she could get any perches off of it and uh, making use of all the features on this wall to help her up this route. Good effort there from Lucy. Female RP1, very similar to position that we saw Campbell plant in as well. So that's going to be interesting to see the results at that one when that's done and dusted. Kieran Loft does now join us in the men's AL1 category. So, chest down movement impaired category. First ever competition for Kieran, so let's see how he gets on. Something just attached to his shoes there by the looks of it, but full campusing power required here. No use of the lower legs. Super work so far from Kieran. All power. The amount of endurance required for this is frankly insane. Let's go, Kieran. Great effort from Kieran in the lower roof section, powering through the first 10 or so overhanging moves. Definitely really intense, that route. Um, big move coming over that angle change as well. I think that's definitely a tricky one. And yeah, it's his first competition, so definitely a good effort. Absolutely. So Alex Downs joins us now, RP1 male. He's going to be on the same route as we saw a second ago, the purple one with the black volumes. Big respect to Alex last night. We were standing in the taxi area together. Donated his taxi to me in the rain. Very happy about that. Nice guy, I can see him competing here. So the male RP1 category is actually a brand new category this year um, in the IFSC competitions. Um, it means that the athletes have a hand impairment or are missing fingers, um, but brand new this year. working way through this lower, lower section then. the EU3 category that's brand new this year, RP1 is not, 
This is Alex Powers through this next section. Good work here from Alex, working his way on the right-hand side. As we continue on the right-hand side of this wall as well. Incredible canvassing power got through that lower section here now, up through the yellow volumes. This is looking really good here. Will, superb work from Will so far. Absolutely blistering through that lower section. Big, big move up now. Double hand match. Can't quite decide whether everyone's got up with the left hand or the right hand. Will just joining the British team. Looks like he might be powered out, but just taking a little rest, rotating on that hand at the moment. Got to find something here. Will. Good effort from Will. Will absolutely motored through the first 10 moves of that route. Yeah, he'll be happy with that. Will just join the British team. He will take away the British title of the AL1 male category as Alex put in a really good battle there. Commentary booth, there's bits of paper flying around everywhere all of a sudden as we work our way through the different categories. So far, we have completed the RP1 female and the AL1 male category. RP1 male category continues. Luke Jamison out next. Trying to follow Alex Downs' is impressive attempts on the first route. You have to join us to the para climbing finals at the British Championships. We'll be moving on to the male RP2 category now. On the right hand side that's going to be Alex Fraxton. Let's see what Luke makes of this purple route with the black volume. Starts down low and right. Alex making a really good start here at the moment, as is Luke Jamison. Alex moving really quickly and actually really confidently through the start of this route. Coming up to a big volume now, which would be a little bit of an obstacle, I reckon, but it looks like he's got quite a lot of power left. Luke Jameson route reading really nicely through this lower section here in the male RP1 category as well. Gets through the first sort of rope retaining lower top rope. It's always a little bit tricky to navigate the, the ropes here for these guys as well. Alex almost up to half height now. Clearly climbing with good technique. Good work from Luke as well now, changing over this bigger angle change here at Raffo. Manly needs to take a little bit of a shake here, Luke. That's going to be crucial. Close to half height on the wall now. Max Downs still motoring. Looking really impressive here at the moment from um, Alex Fraxton, excuse me. Moving through this overhanging section will be really good if you can get past this. He should get a little bit of relief as the wall gets slightly less overhanging, but I imagine the holds also get worse. 
Yeah, like a little bit of a volume section here. Manages to go right hand again. That's quite interesting before using this left hand sort of half moon fiberglass volume. Now it really kicks in this route here on your right hand screen. Alex knows this is a fiercely competitive category, but really dropping the head now, trying so hard. Really good effort using that yellow volume as an intermediate, actually. That's not a good hold. Big move up and left now. Slight hesitation. He's really got to go for it right now for Alex Braxton. Crowd really gets behind him. Let's go, Alex. Good effort. Does fall off on that move. It's like he just ran out of beans. Just 10 move or so from the top. That's great effort. It was a really solid climbing from him there. Making sure he got every last move that he could in. Luke Jameson still fighting away on this purple route. This section of this wall is actually really slabby and with those two volumes there he should be able to rest pretty well and put a lot of weight through his feet which is good coming into this next overhanging section. Yeah the style of the route now changes, he's trying to load the feet as best as he can here Luke while moving upright. Much more technical section. Big powerful move up and left, good effort. Big whip off the wall there as well. Seems to have recovered it. Good effort there from Luke Jameson. That's going to be quite hard to beat. One more climber out in that category, Pete McCarthy. Really exciting stuff so far here at the British Paraclimbing Championships. All the way from Slovenia next in the male RP2 category, Mateo, who's super impressive on the wall yesterday. He'll be starting his campaign on the right hand side on the orange route. He's a very experienced competitor. He's competed in international events for Slovenia over here to get a little bit of comp experience here I imagine there aren't that many competitions throughout the winter for a lot of these athletes so they will often travel um, to make the most of those opportunities and keep their head in it yeah especially on facilities as impressive as these with these routes Peter McCarthy final climber out then in the male RP1 category podium positions on the line here So regularly seen at the Castle Climbing Centre down in London, where I spend most of my days. Matty now, let's see what he makes of this in the male RP2 climb, uh, final climb in the RP2 category. to spare a little bit here at the bottom here. Excited to see how Matty gets on on this route. He has recently climbed a 500 meter alpine climb in the Alps. So I think he's got endurance to spare. Yeah, it sounds like it. 54 moves on this route. We go screen and screen. We've got Peter McCarthy there as well, just trying to figure out this lower section that has caused a few issues around that retaining quick draw. It's a little bit tangly in the rope there as well. Tricky section of the wall there with lots of different angles and volumes around the place, so it can get a little bit complicated. So Matty has got a fight on his hands here because Alex Braxton, the previous athlete, climbed really high up on this route. Let's see how he gets on in this next tricky section with that yellow volume. 
Peter works his way around the various angle changes here, as Hannah said. So many volumes on these routes as well. Matty now up into the more sort of the head wall of this route, just trying to figure out this next section, looking for sort of a slightly different body position, just smearing his feet on the wall now. This is a tough moment here for Matty and does drop. Superb fight, but it was Alex Braxton who's going to take away the RP2 male category. It's really great climbing there, for sure. Um, Matty just not using that yellow intermediate that we saw Alex using, so maybe some tactical errors there. Yeah, you can see sometimes when the pump really kicks in, the route reading becomes harder and harder. So you're really starting to think on the fly. That does conclude the male RP1 and the male RP2 categories. Uh, route on the right hand side male rp1 really decent to see the climbers super high up on the head wall i think um, all the guys in that category are pretty pretty happy with that i imagine so and it's quite exciting to climb on that head wall as well it's definitely an exposed bit of wall and um, to see the big crowd when you come down as well must be pretty exciting for them i certainly used to absolutely love it Okay, moving on to the male B1 category, though B1 is, stands for Totally Blind. Going to be sight-guided by May in the RP1 category. Big Actually sight-guided by Lucy, who is Lucy, our sorry. competitor yep. from earlier in the final. That's right, absolutely. Can't read my own handwriting here. So B1 category, wearing the headsets, describing the way up these routes. So male category B1 just about to get underway then one climber in this category. Connor Scott Gardner. Sight guide. Just describing the lower sections of these routes, trying to point out the various foothold options. Incredible amount of barriers to overcome in this category. So as the climber gets ready, the music here in the venue does drop. So the B1 climber can hear the sight guide. Off to a good start here. Connor. Nice look there. Trying to figure out those lower foot sequences. through that lower section, approaching the angle change now. Quite a large stretch up to this next hold off of the yellow volume. Really well placed left foot though. <sighs> Nicely done to move up with the left hand there. Hopefully that will be a big enough hold to be able to match. So sight guide just down below. 
trying to reel off the information. Got to move fast here now. It does drop off the lower section of the route, but really good effort there from Connor Scott Gardner. Fantastic to see the male B1 category. Totally blind. And working their way through these Raffo overhanging walls. Great start to the British Paraclimbing Championships here. Quite a few categories, various categories to uh, go through. Crown the British Championships, work with champions, work through the different podiums. Up next, we should be working way into the centre of the facilities here at Raffo, back into the main competition wall. AU3 male in the AL2 male categories. moments time that all of those athletes in the next group which is the AU3, the AL2, the AU2, RP3 and RP, uh, RP3 men and women. Those presentations of those athletes will take place in a few minutes time once there's a bit of a rejiggle of the isolation zone back here. We'll take a very short break and we'll be joining you as soon as they get presented. If I'm setting a comp, the first thing you do is you choose your holds. Um, and having good holds, stuff that is inspiring, stuff that is different, that doesn't look the same as everybody else's, is always the key thing. So a set is if there's something new, there's something exciting, something we haven't seen before, something that we haven't played with, that we want to experiment with, then that's, that's kind of what inspires us. You say like a route set is like a conductor with an orchestra and they've got lots of different stuff. They've got a climbing wall, they've got holds and volumes. And the idea is to bring it all together to make to make something which is which is beautiful. Hi there, hello and welcome to City Climb, where we take a look at our favourite climbing cities 
sing its praises and tell you why we love it. I'm Amy. And I'm Ness. And today we're here to tell you all about Sheffield. Sheffield is known as the climbing capital of the UK and it's not hard to see why. It has no less than five major climbing centres, easy access to the Peak District and some of the best outdoor climbing in the country. And best of all, there are literally thousands of site climbers like us. So no wonder people have been coming to Sheffield to train, climb, party for many years now. So let's take a look at the indoor climbing walls. We're here at the Foundry Climbing Centre, which opened over 30 years ago and pretty much launched modern day climbing. There is just so much history here. Probably most famous is the unique wave bouldering wall, which is as well loved today as it's ever been. So on the other side of the history spectrum, is the hangar, Sheffield's newest climbing centre. And like every other wall in Sheffield, it's buzzing with climbers from beginners to experts. As well as this, we have awesome walls with its lead, speed and bouldering. We have the ultra modern depot and finally our personal favourite, the climbing works. Truly Sheffield, you're simply spoiling us. So as a climber, why do you love Sheffield? I just love like, the whole community of it. There's so many people that you see every day and like everybody knows everyone so you always have someone to go climbing with and of course the Peak District is just right there. So if it's a nice day you can just nip out before work and have a great time. How important do you think the Sheffield climbing scene is? Well, I'd say Sheffield is the mecca of UK climbing. Yeah. I've been climbing for around seven years in Sheffield now and everybody's wow. really friendly and it's just a lovely place to be. So how do you find the walls in Sheffield? Um, I mean, I've really been enjoying climbing recently. I've had membership for about a month and a half and I've been coming like every other day, kind of three, four times a week. Um, yeah, it's really good. Indoor, outdoor, indoor, outdoor. What about outdoor climbing? Well, you have come to the right place. The Peak District is right on our doorstep and has more brilliant climbs, closer to more people than you could shake a clipstick at. This BMC guidebooks has some of the best climbing on gritstone, and these two hold more than 3,000 traditional and sport climbs on limestone. Mind-blowing. So for gritstone, the easiest place to get to is right here, the beautiful Burbage Valley, just on the outskirts of town, an easy 20-minute bus journey from the city centre. And once you hop out of the Fox House, you are on the doorstep to 700 brilliant climbs, from moderate to E10, and 300 boulder problems from the easiest to the very hardest. Oh wow, she keep you busy. <laughs> she keep you busy. <laughs> and for sport climbing, it's only a quick hop down the hill to Horseshoe Quarry, with over 250 climbs in the five, sixes and sevens. Now, if you're venturing outside for the first time, be sure to check out the BMC Respect the Rock video series. These short films give you a little heads up into some of the things to consider before taking your first steps outside. So a great way to start getting outside is by joining a club. And today, we're joined by Jen, the president of the Peak Climbing Club. So Jen, what could we get out of joining? So it's a really good opportunity. It's sociable, you can get out and organise meets, you can learn new skills, and it's all about joining the community. Oh, sick, and can anyone join? Absolutely, whether you're starting out, it's for everyone, everyone's welcome. Oh, I think we're definitely sold. So we are joined by BMC ambassador, Molly Thompson smith so Molly, what attracted you to Sheffield? Well, I moved up from London a couple of years ago, mainly for the climbing community and to be close to the Peak District. Oh, nice. And so how are you finding it so far? Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm still here. Um, it's much easier to focus on my training for the World Cups. And it's just a slower pace of life compared to London, which is really enjoyable. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this seems like a definite recommendation for Molly. <laughs> There you have it, a little taste of what Sheffield has to offer if you're a climber. For more information about the walls, climbing outside, the clubs, and all the work the BMC do, be sure to check the link in the description. We've been living and climbing here now for four years, and we've got to say that for us, it's, it's a thumbs, thumbs up Sheffield.
I think I joined the BMC when I was about 11 years old, um, so I could compete for or try to compete for GB and enter all my regional um, competitions that I was so excited to do. Uh, I also think the BMC could improve EDI by uh, making climbing more accessible for all sorts of people, for example, families from with low income or people in the city who just don't have access to the outdoors or don't see it as a place for them. The BMC ensures that we can all have access to climbing crags across the country and that everyone using them is looking after them. They're clean and the rock is in good quality, so that's really important to me as an outdoor climber. And then for competitions, they ensure that I can get away and actually be insured whilst I'm competing, which not many insurance companies actually do, so that's really important to me. And lastly, they are really keen on promoting diversity within climbing and it's so nice to work with an organisation that shares the same passions as I do and has the same ideals and visions for where climbing should be. I hope as a BMC ambassador I'm able to be a role model for those people who might not see themselves um, looking the same as other people within the climbing community. So hopefully I'll be able to reach a new audience for the BMC but also speak to their climbers who've been going for a long time. I think climbing has changed already quite a lot because of the Olympics. Um, there are loads more climbing walls in the across the country and also I think the style is changing so that even the easier boulders are a lot more fun and interesting and more like comp style so people can really have a go at what they've seen at the Olympics at their local gym. Lots of people consider the outdoors as a free space that's open to everyone but for a lot of people, it really doesn't feel that way. So we've brought you here today to find out one thing. Is the outdoors an equal space? Take three steps forward if you have no soul care responsibilities. I found it really difficult to get my kids outdoors because I can't afford the equipment for them. Take three steps forward if you have access to a vehicle. I have to rely on the unreliable public transport. Take three steps forward if you've never had a disability or a long-standing health problem. If you've always been able to afford to access the outdoors. When I went on one of my first trips, I did not have like the right equipment. The sole carer of four children, um, I found it really difficult to get my kids outdoors because um, I can't afford the equipment for them. My aunties and uncles, they split and bought, I don't know how much it costs, but um, it's Gore-Tex, I'm guessing it's quite expensive. They split and bought it for me as a gift. If getting outdoors has always been part of your family or community life, yeah, so I know through to my parents, so I've had to have other people influence me to go out and things like that. My mum, she's really into the countryside and everything, so she <laughs> she always took us out. If you don't have that connection, if you don't have someone who will show you out there or take you, how, do you, how are you going to find out about it? Take three steps forward if you've never struggled from a mental health condition. Take three steps forward if you always see people like you in the outdoors. Sometimes I'm the only black person in the outdoors. And when I go climbing, most people often ask the question, you're a climber. Like when I go outside, I don't see people like me. Take three steps forward if you find it easy to find kit in your size. I'm a size 20, size 22. And, um, I was struggling to find good technical clothing. When the weather conditions get tougher, um, you're actually putting yourself at risk. I started looking at that mountain rescue rescues, and a lot of it was down to people not having the right clothing gear. And actually, for me, it's because I can't get it. It's not that I don't want it, I just can't get it. Now look around you and see where you are. We've all got the same hill to climb, but we don't all have the same start line.
I'm very conscious, and particularly in a way that I wasn't years ago, that I have been very fortunate. There's quite a gap. Um, that's what I realised when we were there, and that gap could be due to not having a good relationship with um, parents and whatnot. They're usually the ones to incentivize their children to take part in stuff like this, and not having them around can impact multiple areas. I want to give myself a big pat on the back for the resilience that I've sort of like displayed in my life, which they do make the effort to be in green spaces, despite whatever you know, despite like the challenges I have to kind of make that happen, I make it happen. But I'm proud of the fact that, you know, my daughter was a couple of steps ahead of me. Today, I, I do, I feel, I genuinely feel bad. Um, I think we, we're all happy to kind of operate in our own little world, aren't we? And we just kind of, I'm going to go out for a walk. And you don't really take the time to think about the fact that actually there are others that would possibly like to do this and they just can't. Yeah, absolutely. Access is not available for everybody, not in the way it should be. There are a multitude of invisible barriers to the outdoors for many people, which disproportionately affects marginalised communities in society. An estimated 2.1 billion in health costs could be saved if everyone had good access to green space. The pleasure and the life fulfilling experiences one can have, I'm just so sorry that it's not so easy for others to experience the things that I have. And it'd be great if more people had those opportunities. Please share this video to show your support and help us push for an outdoors that is truly accessible to all. So I guess the question is why we're here. And these days I'm looking for a bit more than just hard roots. It doesn't have to be hard. I'm looking for roots that really inspire me. Roots that have maybe got a bit more layers than sport climbing. Traditional climbing is just so amazing in the fact that you've, you've got to like work with what nature's given you. And the whole protection thing just massively adds to it. Now, I wouldn't say I'm a real expert traditional climber. I'm certainly not a bold traditional climber, so when I heard about this route, Jabez's route, and the voyage, and I got the feeling the protection was reasonable, that really inspired me. So Steve was pretty keen, started asking me some information on um, routes that I'd done or would recommend. Um, obviously, after telling him about some of the classics, I had to point him at my route, Le Voyage, which in a very uh, Steve McClaw style, said he probably thought it'd be a bit too hard for him, but he might come and have a look. Uh, I think deep down, I knew that he'd be here looking at my new route with me eventually, and climbing Le Voyage would just be a matter of time. Even if he doesn't believe in himself, I think we all believe in Steve McClaw to get to the top of things. Anot is one of the places to go. Uh, so I've come here when I was much younger for bouldering and then the trad developed little by little. And it was actually Lionel, uh, a local, who, um, who showed us the place around uh, a long time ago, like seven years ago. And James weirdly had been tipped off by Tom Randall about a potential line which was going to become Le Voyage. I find it quite shameful that it's a British guy who's going to show to a British guy about a French route in France. But Yeah, I think James has nailed it here. It's, it's not a death route. It is run out, so you can take massive lobs on hard moves. So it's, it's got that factor to it. But a lot of climbing, like 40 metres. And as you saw before the last, like five foot flared off Binger's finger crack. It's like 12 D. So I don't know, it's good, it's, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, nothing for your right hand any, at any point. Just give me one crimp. Maybe there. Oh, that's a scary move, that one.
Okay, check again. Oh, tough. Depends how gripped you are. Well, that's quite a good cam, actually. Whew. It's really quite warm. I'm just going to drop this top off because I'm melting. Right, how do we do this move? That might be it. That's a very, very small foothold. Oh dear. <laughs> That's the sort of foothold I can imagine absolutely pinging off. Fall off here. Oh, that's rubbish. <laughs> That'll be fun. Okay, patch take us there, mate. <sighs> okay. Well, first impressions. Pretty flipping hard. Harder than I thought it was going to be. Kind of thought it might be a bit easier than that. I don't know why. Like sort of wall climbing with edges on it, I can usually sort of pull on them a bit, but it's so flipping complicated. Like, it feels like it's coming together, but normally it doesn't have to come together. You normally you get a hold and you pull on it and you get a next hold. But this is like, you get a hold and you've got to work out how to use it, your feet are all over the place. <sighs> wow. Not sure what to think. More work required, like a lot. Well, once he's got it dialed, he knows what he's doing. He seems to go up a gear, and then he, he, he just, when he gets moving, he just keeps on moving. He seems to have these sort of reserves of endurance, which us mere mortals don't seem to be able to find very easily. I must admit, I, I, I find it quite hard to work out exactly why I get drawn to certain things. I suppose that the beauty of rock climbing is there's so many different styles that you can get into. And I used to be just a traditional climber. That was all I was inspired by. And then I got into the sport climbing and I've kind of moved back into traditional climbing. But I, I really appreciate the, the extra layer that you get with traditional climbing. And it doesn't have to be super hard. It's just gotta be something that really inspires me. Part of that could be due to getting a bit older. Maybe I've sort of let the bar drop a little. Maybe I'm not as strong and maybe I'm not as fit as I used to be. So I'm looking for something which um, I feel capable of doing, which is going to give me as much rewarding experiences, but it's not just about the numbers. And in a way, like, even if I don't succeed, that's maybe not such a problem. It's the, uh, the trying hard and trying something really cool is what it's all about. OK. OK, down. I'll clip some. Yeah, I think I should do. Yesterday was a, a really good day. Pretty knackering, to be honest. Only spent two goes at the route, but two goes was a lot of climbing. So my plan today is I'm feeling a bit tired, so I could try and top rope it, but I'm not sure I'm going to get much information from top roping, so I'm going to give it a sort of, I say a lead attempt, but it's more like a let's lead it and see where I get to. I'm not really... I'm not confident I'll, I'll do it. I'm very unconfident of that. I'm not really trying to do it, but I, I feel like I need to lead, attempt it, 
to feel how the protection fits in, whether my body position is right to place the protection, whether it's fiddly, whether it's actually too hard to place potentially. Uh, maybe I feel like psychologically like I need more or maybe I feel like I don't need it. So there's a lot to learn, which I don't think I'll get by top roping.
Oh. Oh. oh my god. Oh, I've not thought of that for a while, if not ever. Welcome back to the final day's action here. We are live from Raffo in Edinburgh for the finals day. We are halfway through the para climbing finals. After that, we will have the male and female veteran finals, followed by the male and female senior lead finals. So far this morning, we've seen the RP1 category, the AL1 and the B1, and RP2 on the left-hand side of the arena. And this is the athlete presentation for the next set of categories, which is the AL2, AU3, RP3 male, AU2 male, RP3 female and AU2 female. Myself, Mike Langley and Hannah Smith here in the commentary position. We'll be talking you through those various categories as we go through the rest of the morning into the early afternoon here in Raffo. Hannah, it's been a pretty action-packed morning so far. Absolutely, we've already seen multiple categories compete and a few British champions crowned, which is always nice. Um, but yeah, we're on to our second round of finals now, which should be super exciting. So the athletes now will go into their six minute collective observation period. There should be three routes available here to observe. Uh, one per category, you have your final route. AU2 female are going to be on the far left hand side of the wall. That's on the grey section, the old style competition wall here. On the big orange and grey wall up the middle, we will have the AU3 male, AU2 male and RP3 female. This guy as you can see just observing the route there at the moment. And on the left, uh, the right-hand side of the centre wall, it will be AL2 male and RP3 male. This is a collective six-minute observation, and we'll be bringing you full commentary. The first climbers out, which should be the um, AL2 male and AU3 male. Enjoy the observation. We'll be with you shortly.
Hopefully the observation period is complete. Our first athletes out will be the AU3 males in the AL2 male categories, followed by the AU2 RP3s and the AU2 female. To finish us off here for the Paraclimbing British Championships, our attention now does focus on the centre of the centre here at Raffo in Edinburgh. The massively steep and tall orange and grey feature here with roots on the left hand side of the green route with the black volumes and the right hand side which is the predominantly pink holds and black volumes. Hannah Smith joining me in the commentary position here, winner of events on this wall. And Hannah we've got a further six categories of climbing now followed by the male and female veterans and the senior male and female final still to come. But uh, yeah, lots of good action so far. The observation has just finished. Six minutes observation for those categories that I just read out. And looking forward to this one, Hannah. Some strong climbers. Definitely these climbers had a super long day yesterday, starting from fairly early in the morning with their qualification climbs and then quite late into the evening with their semi-finals. Um, so it'll be, quite, uh, it'll be quite tiring for them, I reckon, today. But I think there'll be a lot of adrenaline. A final environment is very different to a qualifier. Um, athletes do tend to switch on that extra try hard and um, certainly be exciting to see that in the power climbing here today. Yeah, solid crowd here at the Rafa Arena as well. Plenty of support for the earlier categories. We have seen British champions crowned in the RP1 female category, AL1 male, RP1 male, RP2 men and the B1 male category. As you can see our next climbers are working their way out. First on the left-hand side, wearing 53, that is going to be Matthew Styles West in the new category of the male AU3. Matthew, based down in Southampton, regularly climbs at Parfi and Southampton Wall, but competes across many different events, including lots of bouldering events. Matthew missing fingers, puts him into the AU3 category. Let's see what he makes of this route on the left-hand side. With Matthew straight into this section. This route tops out at around two thirds height of the big competition wall here in Raffo. Matthew Armitage wearing 47 in the male AL2 category starts on the right hand side. These two routes are both actually adapted from the senior and veteran qualifiers at the lead event yesterday. Um, so, definitely some challenging climbing here. Um, but yeah, these routes look very interesting and they've got some exciting holds on them, actually, that I've not seen that regularly. So it should be interesting to see how these climbers tackle them. So Matthew Armitage on the right-hand side, you can see the lower leg amputee working his way through this looks frankly ridiculously hard right-hand route for the men in the AL2. And Matthew Styles West, no uh, stranger to a few hard moves. See how he gets on with this one. Quite heavily involved here, Matt um, does a lot of the helping out with the various categories as well as well as climbing himself, which is really great to see. And a big move up now to this huge, big green feature volume. As Matthew Armit is just trying to work his way through this lower, slightly overhanging orange feature. Really Matt. big committing move there, actually, from Matthew. It's good effort from him. Works his way off of that big fiberglass volume, powers up and right. Great character to have around the wall here, Matthew Styles West. That ends his competition. One climber in the male AU3 category. Job done for him, another British title to his name. But just a great weekend's work all round, helping out, volunteering, and generally being a top bloke. Matthew Armitage just over halfway on his route, I would say. Um, starting to get into some pretty bad holds now, actually. Yeah, look at that pinch so. for the left hand and jumps up to the right hand volume. Good effort from Matthew Armitage. I think we'd actually be pretty happy with that performance. Absolutely, this wall does get more overhanging as the climbers get higher. And so it only gets more and more challenging, especially with big pinchy holds like that, which are actually really bad. Yeah, we were just discussing during that observation period just off mic there about how hard that route on the right hand side actually looks. Big pinchy volume features. 
think we are definitely in modern settings, starting to see a lot more of these open-handed, pinchy, volume-style holds um, in competitions. I think lead climbing historically has been about having really strong fingers and being able to go for a very long time. Um, we're definitely seeing a lot more 3D kind of holds on these routes and making it for some very interesting moves, actually. Yeah, very visual routes as well. Inspiring to look at. Wearing 50 run now in the male AU2 category. That's James Rudge. He's going to start his campaign on the green route on the left-hand side. And it's going to be Jonathan Shields in the male AL2 category. James, fifth in the world this year for male AU2. competing on the British team so screen in screen here we have the male AU2 on the left and male AL2 on the right Both climbers looking fairly comfortable on the route so far. This big pinch for Jonathan on the right-hand side is one of the early initial hard moves. Works his way through that quite easily. Again, another set of pinches here. Hannah on the right-hand line. Pinch for the right and this big volume pinch on the left hand coming up as well. As he opts to miss it there, it's a pretty smart bit of route reading. Definitely, I think for a lot of these climbers, they will be looking at some of these holds and saying, actually, I think I can skip it out and I'd rather not use it anyway. Um, you notice he was resting on that hold, probably an indication that it's fairly good. Um, so smart climbing by him there. Well, James Rudge is obviously using the two ropes here, as we see in a lot of the para climbing categories. That is essential for their safety and it does get a little bit tangly sometimes. So he's doing really well to try and push through that big sort of sloping ball hold just before the angle really ramps up here as Jonathan Shields now powering through this next section he's going really well on this route over halfway already I think the route will tend to ramp up uh, significantly now as James tries to figure out this next section up to this big ball feature he's going to probably get to a big jump for it oh, very slow and controlled there from him very impressive strength yeah I said he was going to jump and did the absolute opposite there just locked it in as Jonathan surpasses the previous high point of Matthew Armitage through the big fiberglass section there. Going really well here. James is struggling to match feet on this really small foothold. And managing to get his foot out wide. Jonathan just falls off as he goes again for the right hand. Potentially would be a little bit disappointed with that, but overall fine performance from Jonathan setting the setting the high point great effort it does mean all eyes turn to James who goes to a slightly more vertical angle you can see the the effort going through the legs there on that lower section just turning, oh it's just a slip just a slip on the foot Good stuff though from James. Yeah, really unlucky there with the foot slip. And it's a real shame because he did look like he had more to give, but a really good effort nonetheless, making it through that really physical section of the route. Yeah, he only really had the final third of the route to go there. So one more climber to come in both those categories. Final climber in the male AU2 category, Seb. And Stuart Snedden is going to be our final climber out in the male AL2. So you can see Stuart getting ready. British title on the line here, wearing 46.
podium positions to be decided right here for the British Paraclimbing Series, British Paraclimbing Championships, I should say. His six minutes does start on the left-hand side. Seb gets underway as well. Seb is another one of our international competitors. He was fourth in the world this year at the World Championships in Bern. Um, apparently he had a really unlucky run of fourth places, so he's just hoping to break into that podium position on the international circuit. Yeah, not only this is an important competition in its own right, but will be good training for Seb as well. These bigger international events. Stuart has competed internationally as well. You can definitely tell the experience when the international athletes do step onto the stage. They just look a little bit more comfortable in this environment. They've been here before. This next section for Seb does look tricky though. Oh, nicely done adapting the route to work for him powering up with the right hand so Stuart now working his way comfortably over half height on the wall Seb does a little bit of a battle with the, the rope it's a tricky little cross under move Nicely done there from Seb. A little bit of route reading for this big volume section out left. Pretty cool move. Now we saw James making light work of this one, as does Seb. Stuart also pushing on through this tricky section that we saw the previous two climbers struggle on. Yeah, incredible work here from Stuart Snedden. Resting on that pretty bad pinchy hold, actually. He's only got five or six moves to the top now Stuart could be seeing something incredibly impressive here looks pretty relaxed I have to say Seb asking the crowd for a bit more lift as well and they respond Stuart looking for a top here still cruising Stuart Snedden skipping out the away. penultimate hold British champion in the male AL2 Stuart Snedden with an impressive top He'll be the route setter's favourite person now as well, giving them a top for the final climber. Seb taking a nice rest in the middle of this route. Looks pretty relaxed. That tiny section of the wall does actually get a little bit more vertical. Um, so he's making use of that. So it's going to be all eyes on Seb now for the male AU2. Really te techy section here as it transitions from right to left. Body just starting to shake a little bit. Really hard body position here. High feet, good work there from Seb. Really good battle. Sticking it together. Can he go again with the right hand here? Ah, oh, a big roar from Seb, but it's a superb climb. He will take away the title here today at Rafa. Pump of the fist, superb work. Looking really good and that definitely shows that he's got the potential for the international stage as well. Yeah, that was great climbing from him. Uh, brilliant practice for his internationals and fingers crossed next year we'll see him with a few medals brought back. And you were, you were saying earlier how the power climbing is really developing internationally. Yes, definitely. We've had a really successful uh, World Championships in Bern this year and currently the paraclimbers are actually awaiting the decision on whether paraclimbing will be included in the LA 2028 Olympics. That decision coming in the coming months. So a very, very exciting time for the sport. Out next then we have in the female RP3 and male RP3 categories on the left hand side in Itago. Quite a few international medals to their names. Anita is the longest serving member of the GB paraclimbing team and 
actually coaches paraclimbing herself, so very invested in getting more people into the sport. Luke Smith then starts his campaign up this pink route in the RP3 category. So RP standing for limited range in power, three standing for the level of disability or impairment. Anita starts on the left hand side of the main competition wall here, a legend in the game. Such a great ambassador for the sport. It's Luke Smith then looking quite comfortable on this one at the moment. On the right hand side. As is Anita. So there's a slightly tricky section here for Anita moving up to this big rounded ball sloper. Transitioning through the retaining quick draw. She made really light work of getting around that quick draw. I do wonder if that's down to her vast levels of experience. Um, she's no stranger to having to overcome obstacles. So. so Anita now looks for this big fiberglass, big overhanging section coming up. And Luke Smith really in cruise control at the moment. But it's a slightly tricky sequence to read here. Will he match hands with the, the right or go out? straight again to right, opts to go over to a foothold on the far left hand side so that's interesting but it has, seems to have worked for him and needs a power through that section lets out a big power screen there and the crowd responds really nicely here for Anita this is looking like a bit of a bit of a cruise here for Luke right arm looks like it might be tiring slightly but it looks like Luke Smith here Male RP3 is going to take the title with a top. Can't do more than that. Superb effort there from Luke Smith in the male RP3. Just as Anita goes. Great work from Anita Gawal. In the female RP3 category, another great result from her. Great action on the um, main overhanging competition wall here, right in the centre of the arena, Hannah. And we were observing the routes a little bit earlier, and we thought they looked pretty hard. But a couple of tops on the right-hand side, and some really, really solid efforts on the green route as well. Now, great to see some really strong climbing on this competition wall. It can be quite an intimidating wall to climb on. Um, a lot of people find it really difficult, but yeah, these climbers are making it look pretty easy. Final category then in this British Paraclimbing Championships. It's the female AU2, Isabella Walsh. Another of our international athletes competing for GB Climbing. Forearm empty. Bella actually has her own climbing documentary on YouTube called Breaking the Beta, if anybody would like to go and watch. She also says that her strength in climbing is slabs, which this wall is very much not slabby, so unfortunately for her, this is training her weaknesses today. Yeah, straight into a really overhanging section, you can see straight away there. Really inspiring climber to watch. Been on the circuit for quite a, now, a while now, Bella. Always looking really solid on the wall. Let's go, Bella.
moving with confidence through this lower section that's really good uh, up into this big sort of yellow half circle feature we know that there's a hard move coming after this let's see how to get on with this oh easy just transition straight up with the right hand we made really light work of that now she's definitely taking her time but looks confident on all of these moves um, I have no doubt she'll go quite far on this route. Plenty of rest positions for her as well, which she seems to be taking advantage of. You see her focusing on her breathing a lot as well. Very important in climbing to make sure you remember to breathe. It's actually more difficult than you'd imagine. Um, and also helps you just relax into the route and reminds you to take your time, not rush. Um, very good habit to get into. Isabella Ward then just around halfway on this massive competition wall here at Raffo. Super steep and a number of quite complex features to navigate through now. Another big move up and left. Good work here from Bella. All eyes on Bella now, she goes up the right hand side, great effort, another superb performance. Yeah, unlucky for her there because I did think that if she managed to get onto that slightly less overhanging section it would ease off for her, but a great effort nonetheless. So that does conclude the British Paraclimbing Finals. Absolutely stellar performances through all the various categories. Really inspiring stuff and a, and a great event through yesterday and today. We will be taking a short break before we bring you the male and female veteran finals. Following that will be the male and female senior finals. So observation and presentation of the athletes starts at 12.15. So do join us then. If I'm setting a comp, the first thing you do is you choose your holds. Um, and having good holds, stuff that is inspiring, stuff that is different, that doesn't look the same as everybody else's, is always the key thing. So a set is if there's something new, there's something exciting, something we haven't seen before, something that we haven't played with, that we want to experiment with, then that's, that's kind of what inspires us. You say like a route set is like a conductor with an orchestra and they've got lots of different stuff. They've got a climbing wall, they've got holds and volumes. And the idea is to bring it all together to make to make something which is which is beautiful. Hi there, hello and welcome to City Climb, where we take a look at our favourite climbing cities 
sing its praises and tell you why we love it. I'm Amy. And I'm Ness. And today we're here to tell you all about Sheffield. Sheffield is known as the climbing capital of the UK and it's not hard to see why. It has no less than five major climbing centres, easy access to the Peak District and some of the best outdoor climbing in the country. And best of all, there are literally thousands of site climbers like us. So no wonder people have been coming to Sheffield to train, climb, party for many years now. So let's take a look at the indoor climbing walls. We're here at the Foundry Climbing Centre, which opened over 30 years ago and pretty much launched modern day climbing. There is just so much history here. Probably most famous is the unique wave bouldering wall, which is as well loved today as it's ever been. So on the other side of the history spectrum, is the hangar, Sheffield's newest climbing centre. And like every other wall in Sheffield, it's buzzing with climbers from beginners to experts. As well as this, we have awesome walls with its lead, speed and bouldering. We have the ultra modern depot and finally our personal favourite, the climbing works. Truly Sheffield, you're simply spoiling us. So as a climber, why do you love Sheffield? I just love like, the whole community of it. There's so many people that you see every day and like everybody knows everyone, so you always have someone to go climbing with. And of course, the Peak District is just right there. So if it's a nice day, you can just nip out before work and have a great time. How important do you think the Sheffield climbing scene is? Well, I'd say Sheffield is the mecca of UK climbing. Yeah. I've been climbing for around seven years in Sheffield now and everybody's wow. really friendly and it's just a lovely place to be. So how do you find the walls in Sheffield? Um, I mean, I've really been enjoying climbing recently. I've had membership for about a month and a half and I've been coming like every other day, kind of three, four times a week. Um, yeah, it's really good. Indoor, outdoor, indoor, outdoor. What about outdoor climbing? Well, you have come to the right place. The Peak District is right on our doorstep and has more brilliant climbs, closer to more people than you could shake a clip stick at. This BMC guidebooks has some of the best climbing on gritstone. And these two hold more than 3,000 traditional and sport climbs on limestone. Mind blowing. So for gritstone, the easiest place to get to is right here, the beautiful Burbage Valley, just on the outskirts of town. An easy 20 minute bus journey from the city centre. And once you hop out of the Fox House, you are on the doorstep to 700 brilliant climbs from moderate to E10 and 300 boulder problems from the easiest to the very hardest. Oh wow, should keep you busy. <laughs> should keep you busy. <laughs> And for sport climbing, it's only a quick hop down the hill to Horseshoe Quarry, with over 250 climbs in the 5s, 6s and 7s. Now, if you're venturing outside for the first time, be sure to check out the BMC Respect the Rock video series. These short films give you a little heads up into some of the things to consider before taking your first steps outside. So a great way to start getting outside is by joining a club. And today we're joined by Jen, the president of the Peak Climbing Club. So Jen, what could we get out of joining? So it's a really good opportunity. It's sociable, you can get out and organise meets, you can learn new skills, and it's all about joining the community. Oh, sick, and can anyone join? Absolutely, whether you're starting out, it's for everyone, everyone's welcome. Oh, I think we're definitely sold. So we are joined by BMC ambassador Molly Thompson Smith. So Molly, what attracted you to Sheffield? Well, I moved up from London a couple years ago, mainly for the climbing community and to be close to the Peak District. Oh, nice. And so how are you finding it so far? Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm still here. Um, it's much easier to focus on my training for the World Cups and it's just a slower pace of life compared to London, which is really enjoyable. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this seems like a definite recommendation for Molly. There you have it, a little taste of what Sheffield has to offer if you're a climber. For more information about the walls, climbing outside, the clubs and all the work the BMC do, be sure to check the link in the description. We've been living and climbing here now for four years and we've got to say that for us, it's, it's a thumbs, thumbs up Sheffield.
I think I joined the BMC when I was about 11 years old, um, so I could compete for or try to compete for GB and enter all my regional um, competitions that I was so excited to do. Uh, I also think the BMC could improve EDI by uh, making climbing more accessible for all sorts of people, for example, families from with low income or people in the city who just don't have access to the outdoors or don't see it as a place for them. The BMC ensures that we can all have access to climbing crags across the country and that everyone using them is looking after them. They're clean and the rock is in good quality, so that's really important to me as an outdoor climber. And then for competitions, they ensure that I can get away and actually be insured whilst I'm competing, which not many insurance companies actually do, so that's really important to me. And lastly, they are really keen on promoting diversity within climbing and it's so nice to work with an organisation that shares the same passions as I do and has the same ideals and visions for where climbing should be. I hope as a BMC ambassador I'm able to be a role model for those people who might not see themselves um, looking the same as other people within the climbing community. So hopefully I'll be able to reach a new audience for the BMC but also speak to their climbers who've been going for a long time. I think climbing has changed already quite a lot because of the Olympics. Um, there are loads more climbing walls in the across the country and also I think the style is changing so that even the easier boulders are a lot more fun and interesting and more like comp style so people can really have a go at what they've seen at the Olympics at their local gym. Lots of people consider the outdoors as a free space that's open to everyone. But for a lot of people, it really doesn't feel that way. So we've brought you here today to find out one thing. Is the outdoors an eco space? Take three steps forward if you have no sole care responsibilities. I found it really difficult to get my kids outdoors because I can't afford the equipment for them. Take three steps forward if you have access to a vehicle. I have to rely on the unreliable public transport. Take three steps forward if you've never had a disability or a long-standing health problem. If you've always been able to afford to access the outdoors. When I went on one of my first trips, I did not have like the right equipment. The sole care of four children, um, I found it really difficult to get my kids outdoors because um, I can't afford the equipment for them. My aunties and uncles, they split and bought, I don't know how much it costs, but um, it's Gore-Tex, I'm guessing it's quite expensive. They split and bought it for me as a gift. If getting outdoors has always been part of your family or community life, yeah, so I know through my parents, so I've had to have other people influence me to go out and things like that. My mum, she's really into the countryside and everything, so she <laughs> she always took us out. If you don't have that connection, if you don't have someone who show you out there or take you, how, do you, how are you going to find out about it? Take three steps forward if you've never struggled from a mental health condition. Take three steps forward if you always see people like you in the outdoors. Sometimes I'm the only black person in the outdoors. And when I go climbing, most people often ask the question, you're a climber. Like when I go outside, I don't see people that day. Take three steps forward if you find it easy to find kit in your size. I'm a size 20, size 22. And, um, I was struggling to find good technical clothing. When the weather conditions get tougher, um, you're actually putting yourself at risk. I started looking at that mountain rescue rescues, and a lot of it was down to people not having the right clothing gear. And actually, for me, it's because I can't get it. It's not that I don't want it, I just can't get it. Now look around you and see where you are. We've all got the same hill to climb, but we don't all have the same start line.
I'm very conscious, and particularly in a way that I wasn't years ago, that I have been very fortunate. There's quite a gap. Um, that's what I realised when we were there, and that gap could be due to not having a good relationship with um, parents and whatnot. They're usually the ones to incentivize their children to take part in stuff like this, and not having them around can impact multiple areas. I want to give myself a big pat on the back for the resilience that I've sort of like displayed in my life, which they do make the effort to be in green spaces, despite whatever, you know, despite like the challenges I have to kind of make that happen, I make it happen. But I'm proud of the fact that, you know, my daughter was a couple of steps ahead of me. Today, I, I do, I feel, I genuinely feel bad. Um, I think we all, we're all happy to kind of operate in our own little world, aren't we? And we just kind of, I'm going to go out for a walk. And you don't really take the time to think about the fact that actually there are others that would possibly like to do this and they just can't. Yeah, absolutely. Access is not available for everybody, not in the way it should be. There are a multitude of invisible barriers to the outdoors for many people, which disproportionately affects marginalised communities in society. An estimated 2.1 billion in health costs could be saved if everyone had good access to green space. The pleasure and the life fulfilling experiences one can have, I'm just so sorry that it's not so easy for others to experience the things that I have. And it'd be great if more people had those opportunities. Please share this video to show your support and help us push for an outdoors that is truly accessible to all. So I guess the question is why we're we here? And these days I'm looking for a bit more than just hard roots. It doesn't have to be hard. I'm looking for roots that really inspire me. Roots that have maybe got a bit more layers than sport climbing. Traditional climbing is just so amazing in the fact that you've, you've got to like work with what nature's given you. And the whole protection thing just massively adds to it. Now, I wouldn't say I'm a real expert traditional climber. I'm certainly not a bold traditional climber. So when I heard about this route, Jamie's route, and the voyage, and I got the feeling the protection was reasonable, that really inspired me. So Steve was pretty keen, started asking me some information on um, routes that I'd done or would recommend. Um, obviously, after telling him about some of the classics, I had to point him at my route, Le Voyage, which in a very uh, Steve McClaw style, said he probably thought it'd be a bit too hard for him, but he might come and have a look. Uh, I think deep down, I knew that he'd be here looking at my new route with me eventually, and climbing Le Voyage would just be a matter of time. Even if he doesn't believe in himself, I think we all believe in Stephen McClaw to get to the top of things. Anot is one of the places to go. Uh, so I've come here when I was much younger for bouldering and then the trad developed little by little. And it was actually Lionel, uh, a local, who, um, who showed us the place around uh, a long time ago, like seven years ago. And James weirdly had been tipped off by Tom Randall about a potential line which was going to become Le Voyage. I find it quite shameful that it's a British guy who's going to show to a British guy about a French route in France. But Yeah, I think James has nailed it here. It's, it's not a death route. It is run out, so you can take massive robs on hard moves. So it's, it's got that factor to it. But a lot of climbing, like 40 metres. And as you saw before the last, like five foot, like flared off fingers, finger crack. It's like 12 days. So I don't know, it's good, it's, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, nothing for your right hand any, at any point. Just give me one crimp. Maybe there. Oh, that's a scary move, that one.
Okay, check again. Oh, tough. Depends how gripped you are. Well, that's quite a good cam, actually. Whew. That's really quite warm. I'm just going to drop this top off because I'm melting. Right, how do we do this move? That might be it. That's a very, very small foothold. Oh dear. <laughs> That's the sort of foothold I can imagine absolutely pinging off. Oh, yeah. oh, that's rubbish. <laughs> That'll be fun. Okay, patch stickers there, mate. <sighs> okay. Well, first impressions. Fruit flipping hard. Harder than I thought it was going to be. Kind of thought it might be a bit easier than that. I don't know why. Like sort of wall climbing with edges on it, I can usually sort of pull on them a bit, but it's so flipping complicated. Like, it feels like it's coming together, but normally it doesn't have to come together. You normally you get a hold and you pull on it and you get a next hold. But this is like, you get a hold and you've got to work out how to use it, your feet are all over the place. <sighs> wow. Not sure what to think. More work required, like a lot. Well, once he's got it dialed, he knows what he's doing. He seems to go up a gear, and then he, he, he just, when he gets moving, he just keeps on moving. He seems to have these sort of reserves of endurance, which us mere mortals don't seem to be able to find very easily. I must admit, I, I, I find it quite hard to work out exactly why I get drawn to certain things. I suppose that the beauty of rock climbing is there's so many different styles that you can get into. And I used to be just a traditional climber. That was all I was inspired by. And then I got into the sport climbing and I've kind of moved back into traditional climbing. But I, I really appreciate the, the extra layer that you get with traditional climbing. And it doesn't have to be super hard. It's just gotta be something that really inspires me. Part of that could be due to getting a bit older. Maybe I've sort of let the bar drop a little. Maybe I'm not as strong and maybe I'm not as fit as I used to be. So I'm looking for something which um, I feel capable of doing, which is gonna give me as much rewarding experiences, but it's not just about the numbers. And in a way, like, even if I don't succeed, that's maybe not such a problem. It's the, uh, the trying hard and trying something really cool is what it's all about. Okay. Okay, down. I'll clip some. Yeah, I think I should do. Yesterday was a, a really good day. Pretty knackering, to be honest. Only spent two goes at the route, but two goes was a lot of climbing. So my plan today is I'm feeling a bit tired, so I could try and top rope it, but I'm not sure I'm gonna get much information from top roping, so I'm gonna give it a sort of, I say a lead attempt, but it's more like a let's lead it and see where I get to. I'm not really, I'm not confident I'll, I'll do it. I'm very unconfident of that. I'm not really trying to do it, but I, I feel like I need to lead, attempt it 
to feel how the protection fits in, whether my body position is right to place the protection, whether it's fiddly, whether it's actually too hard to place potentially. Uh, maybe I feel like psychologically like I need more or maybe I feel like I don't need it. So there's a lot to learn which I don't think I'll get by top roping.
Welcome back then to the final days of live climbing here at the Raffo Arena here in Edinburgh, an event hosted by the British Mountaineering Council and GB Climbing. We have completed the British Para Climbing Championship finals this morning and now we move into the male and senior veterinary finals. Three guys, John Banyard, Nigel Leeming and James Pollard and April Welch representing the female veteran category. Everybody's going to be climbing on the far right hand side of the wall here. Pink holds, dominantly with black volumes. This route tops out the sort of three quarters height of this immense feature here. Mike Langley here all weekend alongside me has been an absolute pleasure to have Hannah Smith, XGB athlete and all round knowledgeable climber who's been giving us the inside line on all of the climbers and the tricky sections of these routes. And Hannah, it's been a great morning, but these routes, um, yeah, we've got three routes still to climb and they look in uh, quite interesting yeah so this pink route that we are we are looking at in the veteran final has been just been getting adapted by the route setters from the para climbing finals we saw them on the cherry picker taking a few holds and um, so the veteran category are just reading that just now but it looks like um, a fairly short route in comparison to the ones they were on yesterday certain their, certainly their semi-finals route was a very long route with I think about 60 moves um, this is a little bit shorter, but I imagine slightly more powerful, definitely some pinchy and volumey holds. Yeah, tops out at 36 moves this one, so yeah, very different sort of skill set in some ways. Um, they are in the six minute joint observation period at the moment, and we'll be joining you back here for live coverage in just about five minutes' time, and we'll see the first climber, John Banyard, will be on the wall.
That does conclude the observation period for the male and female veteran categories. John Banyard in front of us there, looking like pretty keen to get on with this one. Decided not to go back to the isolation zone, just straps his boots on, chalks up, and looks ahead. And we'll want to get this one underway. Mike Langley and Hannah Smith here, talking you through this male and female veterinary final. After that, at one o'clock, we'll have the presentation for the senior and male female final. Climbing for that one will start at 10 minutes past one, so don't miss out on that one after this event. John Banyard, one of the climbers you see regularly down in London, climbing at the various bouldering walls down there. Competes a lot of the bouldering competitions. Not immediately happy with uh, being on a rope, but uh, as the story goes, got slightly convinced to do it by the uh, his, uh, fellow competitors, Nigel Leeming and James Pollard, who are going to be out after him. It's interesting you say that he is more of a boulderer. Obviously, we talked a bit earlier about how last night's semi-final route was around 60 moves, whereas this route is only 36, was it? Um, so almost half the length, and maybe being a boulderer um, might help him on this one because I reckon the moves are going to be a little bit more powerful. Yeah, so John Banyard pulls on then for the male vet final. Three climbers in this category. It's all going to be about who gets which position on the podium. Elements of nerves, obviously being more of a favoured and a boulderer. It's quite a decent crowd here now at Raffo to watch these guys cheering them all on. Absolutely superb to get involved from John. It's one of the early sort of tricky sections of that left hand pinch and the rollover. Efficiency of clipping so important on these routes, especially when the angles really kick back. Very different style to what we saw yesterday. This one much more sort of face climbing style compared to yesterday's 3D. A lot of roof climbing, as Hannah was alluding to there. Much longer beast of a route, and this one almost half its length. But um, fatigue could potentially become an issue as well through the multiple days of climbing now. Currently moving past hole 21 of a potential 36. 36 is the top, so this is good work from John so far. Slightly nervous that the route setters haven't made this one quite hard enough, so we'll see. Will it come down to the last few moves this route? Big smash up though with the right hand there from John. Yeah, John looking like he's trying a little bit harder now with that big smash up to that pinchy hold. These holds are a lot more open-handed than the ones they were on yesterday. Um, but being a boulder, I may be more familiar with those holds anyway. Um, but certainly different on a route to have an open-handed hold to clip off than a crimp. It makes a difference to how much energy it saps from your forearms. This is a, a move that we've seen just been adjusted by the route set is just before the round started. So big pinch in the right hand, got to move up and right just weaves its way slightly to the right now. Let's see what John makes of this. Opting to go for the left hand as an undercut rather than the match. Amazing yeah. effort on that stand-up move into that undercut. That's really difficult, especially at that angle. Um, that will have felt pretty intense, I imagine. Yeah, just fumbled the clip there. He's obviously looking pretty pumped all of a sudden. Where are you going to go for one more move? Is or is he just going to bail? Let's go, John. When you go back to the clip, you can see the right hand just opening up. Good effort from John. This pinch is really tricky to clip off. Smearing on the feet as well, but a good weekend and a great effort from John Banyard. He did look a little bit uh, confused there. Didn't look comfortable clipping and wasn't sure about the next hold, but yeah, a really good find from him. Yeah, that'd be a score in the region of 24. That's just me judging it from the commentary position here. It's not an official result, but it's in the region of. So three more climbers to come in the male and female veterinary categories on this right hand side before a short break and then we'll be on with the male and senior finals it starts at 10 past one.
Great effort from John. He can go back to the bouldering wall, I think. Hopefully he's been inspired and inspired a few others to get involved in the ropes as well. It's definitely been a long two days for these climbers, having competed in two rounds yesterday and then a further one this morning. Um, so yeah, really solid effort just to put in really good efforts on all of his routes. Yeah, there was a bit of a discussion last night whether the vets were going to have a semi-final round because there's so few of them to compete. But they decided getting on the wall and climbing is better than uh, opting out and resting, which was pretty inspiring to see, considering how long the route was yesterday. Here comes Nigel Leeming. He's out next in the men's category. Fierce competition between Nigel and James. Very friendly rivalry over the years. James Pollard will be out as the final climber in that category. Nigel Leeming has been competing for years and years in various competitions. He's very keen on his Ninja Warrior events as well. Let's see how he gets on on this route. Six minutes to attempt. Don't think time will become an issue on this one. generally quite a steady climber so if anybody were to be affected by time out of the remaining two competitors it may be him but very experienced to counteract that he seems to be making good progress through these first few moves because this route is a lot shorter he doesn't necessarily have to be as quick um, climbing quicker will mostly be beneficial to him in terms of saving his energy for the last few moves which we saw actually look quite tricky yeah he's opting to skip quite a few holds here. It's um, interesting if that's just tactics or nerves. doesn't strike me as somebody who would necessarily get affected by nerves too much, but he seems to be opting to just match a couple of the bigger holds rather than using some of the lower down pinches. Great clipping positions there, really efficient. Two now with his right hand. Just getting into this more open handed section of the route, which I think is designed just to tie the climbers out a little bit more. You go from steady climbing on fairly positive holds into a little bit um, more uncomfortable climbing, shall we say. This is a section then we thought might be quite tricky. He opts to skip entirely the pinch out on right. Nigel Leaming absolutely cruising here at the moment. He's managed to get that clip in as well that we saw John struggling with. Angle change just kicks back a little bit now. The footholds get a little bit worse. They're just standing on top of the pinch holds. Nigel is fatiguing a little bit and uh, just searching around for the correct beta, which way to put the hands. We've just got two moves left now for Nigel Leaming, which will definitely pile the pressure on James Pollard, who is out next. Left hand goes up, looks tired. But gets it done, Nigel Leaving tops out as long as he can clip the final draw and does. Great climbing from Nigel there. He looked like maybe that second last move was a little bit tricky and it's try hard, but got the job done. And no pressure now on James. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just to add to the pressure, it's James's birthday as well, apparently. So uh, birthday top would be nice. Nigel certainly wasn't giving him an easy job in finals as a birthday present then. Yeah, no gifts there. One climber left in the male vet final and one climber in the female vet final, April Welch. Yes, Nigel. <laughs> Can't ask for more than a top in the final. Solid work. Good show from Nigel Leeming. Super chuffed with that 
walks through the crowd to his fan club. Here we go then, April Welch. Our female veteran finalist. April is a local. She's from Edinburgh, trains here at Ratho. Um, it's regularly seen here on, at the weekend. Um, it's very supportive of a lot of the younger climbers as well here. So she's got a, a very big fan club in the crowd. Obviously, it's slightly interesting. You're the only competitor in the category, but she seems to just be out there to try and compete against the roots. Yeah, I think she's very positive about her own climbing and really enjoys being in this competitive environment. So as much as I think she'll be disappointed not to see someone else in her category with her, I think she's quite happy just to climb. She opted to do the semi-final route last night to get as much climbing in in this competition as possible, um, especially since it's her home wall. I think she'll find that um, definitely adds to the experience as well. Nice and efficiently through this lower section at the moment, kind of not getting put off by the nerves and the, and the crowd here not too many empty seats in the arena now as people are really enjoying this final day here at Raffo April just looking a little bit hesitant when it comes to this big pinch hold um, these holds are actually fairly new. They were brought in for the Lead World Cup at Ratho um, last year. So, yeah, I think she's not climbed on those as much as she has these other smaller pink holds, which she probably feels a little bit more comfortable on. Yeah, as climbers, we definitely do have our preferences in terms of what are our strengths and weaknesses in terms of different grip type. See her opting to chalk up off of that drag position, um, so clearly quite comfortable not having to use all of her fingers, um, and on the smaller holds as well. A really measured climb so far here from April. She pushes into half height on the wall. That's hold 21 at the moment. 36 is the top. April not being rushed by the crowd. A lot of people shouting, come on, April, but she's just really working that rest. Now pushes on for the second half of the route. Really finding good, efficient body positions all throughout this route so far. A lot of straight armed climbing, clipping in sensible positions. Definitely making the most of all the resting positions that are on this route. And um, chalking up plenty as well due to the hot and humid conditions in here. Starting to look a little bit tired in the right arm now. That pinch has caused a little bit of a tr trouble for the men's category as well there from John Banyard. See how April can deal with this next section. Got a power through, just a bit of a stumble. Oh, it's almost like her knee just banged into the wall there. Just threw her off slightly. Good effort though from April Welch all throughout the weekend. Oh, that was really unlucky there. Um, definitely looks like she had a bit more to give, but she's coming down with a smile on her face. That does conclude the male and female veterinary finals here at the British Championships in Raffo. Apart from James Pollard, obviously. <laughs> I was heading for a sandwich there all of a sudden. James Pollard, uh, someone I've known for a long time as well, and it's his birthday and he forgot about him. He'll be out next, our final male veterinary climber. Sorry, James, I was, I was off for an ice cream.
This is April Untithes. Just to give you a reminder of the schedule for the rest of the day, we're at 1 o'clock local time here in Edinburgh. It's the observation and presentation of the senior male and female. Climbing for that one will start at 10 past 1. And that will be the conclusion of this championships. Here he comes, birthday boy. 25, you told me. James Pollard then, a medic during the day. Really strong climber in the evenings and weekends. Starting to enter a lot more events. Let's see how he gets on between Nigel. He's going to have to top the route. And that will go back to count back and he'll take the championships if he can. It's a top or nothing here from James Pollard. He may not actually be aware of the fact he would have to top this route. Um, we have spoken about yesterday in the lead semi-finals that climbers can quite often see where the previous climber before them roughly fell off due to some things like swinging clips. They can also hear the crowd when they're standing at the side of the wall waiting to go on. Uh, but James will have been in isolation when Nigel was climbing because we had April climbing before James. Um, so he very well may not have heard any of the cheering or anything. So maybe completely unaware of what he has to do. Yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd be surprised if he does know at this stage. We've just got to try and focus on the route itself. Interesting route reading there, just deciding to skip a couple of moves, just powering straight through to that next set of pinches. It's interesting when you come to endurance style climbing, how you can feel amazing at the bottom. And you maybe sometimes use a bit too much power on the lower section. You've got to always try and climb efficiency. So he's deep locked. Trying to reach straight up for that next hole, but just needs to keep it together here and just rest his way through the route. Seems to be in full control at the moment here, James. Opting to use that rest just briefly there, so April previous category just using that as a long rest. James is powering through. Again likes to, uh, to do a lot of bouldering so maybe not got the top high-end efficiency and endurance that he might need. I mean, no issues with this route at the moment so far James is absolutely just blasting through this. He's into the top third of the route already. Time definitely won't be a factor. Yeah, he looks pretty pretty relaxed. He's only got one more quick draw and then the top chain's left. Um, so he'll know that he doesn't have an awful lot of climbing left to do, but seems to be taking his time just to make sure he doesn't make any mistakes. Yeah, mistakes is really should be the only thing that's going to throw him off here, but there's a couple of tricky moves to finish, four or so moves to go. He's looking around a lot all of a sudden now. Nigel Leaming really has piled on the pressure here for James Pollard. Starting to look a little bit tired, but he's just got to keep moving here see the head going left and right trying to figure out his option that is a pretty bad left hand crimp he's gonna have to commit to it he does look tired in the left arm now let's go James oh he's in his off James Pollard just all of a sudden powered out at the top of the route I think there just a little bit of hesitation might have cost him there it always um, happens that if you stop on the route for too long all of a sudden the pump um, just piles on on your forearms and before you know it, you're really struggling. Um, I was really unlucky, but he looks to still have had a really good time. Birthday cheers there for uh, James. I <laughs> think he'll be pretty annoyed that he hasn't topped the route, but a great effort from Nigel Leeming, who does take the male veterinary British Championship this year in 2023. Yeah, right down to the final couple of moves there. Good show in the end. And this time, that does conclude the veterinary finals here do join us again in just over 15 minutes time as we get underway the senior male and female finals but for now a cup of tea and we'll see you back here shortly
Oh. Oh. oh my god. Oh, I've not thought of that for a while, if not ever. I forget that was cool. What a route! Hey James, that is just such a route. That is such a route. Oh yeah, that was it. Was that a show? Don't say that man, that was that like a battle and a half that. I'm not sure I deserve that. I'll take it like. Wow, that was wild. That was so cool. Whew. Right, I'm done. <laughs> that took me down. Oh wow. Oh, oh man, not as speechless as I was up there. I, I, literally, my mouth is so dry, I feel like someone pouring chalk into it. <laughs> I was like, that, that. that was ridiculous. I don't think you can appreciate how close that was to falling off, but it was just such a good example of grit and determination. That, that was like, amazing. My main thing is, don't like giving up. Don't like giving up. But yeah, wow, what well, a good route, man. Well, I'm really happy that you did Even it. if it had been easier, it wouldn't have been such a fight. And the fight was like, that was the thing I'll take home. That was the thing I'll take home, is that absolute fear and panic of just like, I'm going to fall off, going for an absolute jug. And I so <laughs> nearly did, and go a long way. Man, that was close. If I'm setting a comp, the first thing you do is you choose your holds. Um, and having good holds, stuff that is inspiring, stuff that is different, that doesn't look the same as everybody else's, is always the key thing. So as set as if there's something new, there's something exciting, something we haven't seen before, something that we haven't played with, that we want to experiment with, then that's, that's kind of what inspires us. You say like a route set is like a conductor with an orchestra and they've got lots of different stuff. They've got a climbing wall, they've got holds and volumes. And the idea is to bring it all together to make to make something which is which is beautiful. Hi 
Hi there, hello, and welcome to City Climb, where we take a look at our favourite climbing cities, sing its praises, and tell you why we love it. I'm Amy. And I'm Ness. And today we're here to tell you all about Sheffield. Sheffield is known as the climbing capital of the UK, and it's not hard to see why. It has no less than five major climbing centres, easy access to the Peak District, and some of the best outdoor climbing in the country. And best of all, there are literally thousands of site climbers like us. So no wonder people have been coming to Sheffield to train, climb, party for many years now. So let's take a look at the indoor climbing walls. We're here at the Foundry Climbing Centre, which opened over 30 years ago and pretty much launched modern day climbing. There is just so much history here. Probably most famous is the unique wave bouldering wall, which is as well loved today as it's ever been. So on the other side of the history spectrum, is the hangar, Sheffield's newest climbing centre. And like every other wall in Sheffield, it's buzzing with climbers from beginners to experts. As well as this, we have awesome walls with its lead, speed and bouldering. We have the ultra modern depot and finally our personal favourite, the climbing works. Truly Sheffield, you're simply spoiling us. So as a climber, why do you love Sheffield? I just love like, the whole community of it. There's so many people that you see every day and like everybody knows everyone so you always have someone to go climbing with and of course the Peak District is just right there. So if it's a nice day you can just nip out before work and have a great time. How important do you think the Sheffield climbing scene is? Well, I'd say Sheffield is the mecca of UK climbing. Yeah. I've been climbing for around seven years in Sheffield now and everybody's wow. really friendly and it's just a lovely place to be. So how do you find the walls in Sheffield? Um, I mean, I've really been enjoying climbing recently. I've had membership for about a month and a half and I've been coming like every other day, kind of three, four times a week. Um, yeah, it's really good. Indoor, outdoor, indoor, outdoor. What about outdoor climbing? Well, you have come to the right place. The Peak District is right on our doorstep and has more brilliant climbs, closer to more people than you could shake a clipstick at. This BMC guidebooks has some of the best climbing on Gritstone, and these two hold more than 3,000 traditional and sport climbs on limestone. Mind-blowing. So for Gritstone, the easiest place to get to is right here, the beautiful Burbage Valley, just on the outskirts of town, an easy 20-minute bus journey from the city centre. And once you hop out of the Fox House, you are on the doorstep to 700 brilliant climbs, from moderate to E10, and 300 boulder problems from the easiest to the very hardest. Oh wow, she keep you busy. <laughs> she keep you busy. <laughs> and for sport climbing, it's only a quick hop down the hill to Horseshoe Quarry, with over 250 climbs in the five, sixes and sevens. Now, if you're venturing outside for the first time, be sure to check out the BMC Respect the Rock video series. These short films give you a little heads up into some of the things to consider before taking your first steps outside. So a great way to start getting outside is by joining a club. And today, we're joined by Jen, the president of the Peak Climbing Club. So Jen, what could we get out of joining? So it's a really good opportunity. It's sociable, you can get out and organise meets, you can learn new skills, and it's all about joining the community. Oh, sick, and can anyone join? Absolutely, whether you're starting out, it's for everyone, everyone's welcome. Oh, I think we're definitely sold. So we are joined by BMC ambassador, Molly Thompson smith so Molly, what attracted you to Sheffield? Well, I moved up from London a couple of years ago, mainly for the climbing community and to be close to the Peak District. Oh, nice. And so how are you finding it so far? Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm still here. Um, it's much easier to focus on my training for the World Cups. And it's just a slower pace of life compared to London, which is really enjoyable. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this seems like a definite recommendation for Molly. <laughs> There you have it, a little taste of what Sheffield has to offer if you're a climber. For more information about the walls, climbing outside, the clubs, and all the work the BMC do, be sure to check the link in the description. We've been living and climbing here now for four years, and we've got to say that for us, it's, it's a thumbs, thumbs up Sheffield.
I think I joined the BMC when I was about 11 years old, um, so I could compete for or try to compete for GB and enter all my regional um, competitions that I was so excited to do. Uh, I also think the BMC could improve EDI by uh, making climbing more accessible for all sorts of people, for example, families from with low income or people in the city who just don't have access to the outdoors or don't see it as a place for them. The BMC ensures that we can all have access to climbing crags across the country and that everyone using them is looking after them. They're clean and the rock is in good quality, so that's really important to me as an outdoor climber. And then for competitions, they ensure that I can get away and actually be insured whilst I'm competing, which not many insurance companies actually do, so that's really important to me. And lastly, they are really keen on promoting diversity within climbing and it's so nice to work with an organisation that shares the same passions as I do and has the same ideals and visions for where climbing should be. I hope as a BMC ambassador I'm able to be a role model for those people who might not see themselves um, looking the same as other people within the climbing community. So hopefully I'll be able to reach a new audience for the BMC but also speak to their climbers who've been going for a long time. I think climbing has changed already quite a lot because of the Olympics. Um, there are loads more climbing walls in the across the country and also I think the style is changing so that even the easier boulders are a lot more fun and interesting and more like comp style so people can really have a go at what they've seen at the Olympics at their local gym. Hello and welcome back to Raffo here in Edinburgh for the final action this weekend of the British Speed Lead and Power Climbing Championships hosted by the British Mountaineering Council and GB Climbing. We are here in this incredible arena. We've had the Power Climbing final so far today and on your screen we, that is the results for the veterinary finals. Female April Welch takes away the gold medal. Actually the only competitor in her category and those guys Nigel Leeming, James Pollard and John Banyard went toe to toe all the way through the weekend with Nigel coming out on top with a top. Mike Langley here, I've been guiding you through all the action this weekend alongside me, ex-GB athlete Hannah Smith. Hannah, the final coming up, um, this is the semi-final results for these athletes and it's an incredibly tight field. In the women's category, just one move, literally one move separated sixth to first. That is how close this one could be here tonight. Yeah, so the female semi-final in particular being very, very tight. Um, there was actually a couple of athletes, I think maybe one or two that missed out on semi-finals but actually also scored 36 plus. So it did go to count back. Um, so yeah, all to play for in this final and I think we could see the positions moving around a fair bit. In the men's, also a couple of really close results, only maybe four holds separating all of the men. Um, so again, all to play for. We don't really know who's going to end up on our podium yet, but looking forward to it. So if you have just joined us, do go back and watch those semi-final streams and the speed finals from last night. Ahead of us now, we're going to have the athlete presentation uh, followed by the six-minute observation period. These are our finalists side by side. Finley Kurzweil, Hannah Kerr, Sam Butterworth, Jonine. Diane Akhtar, Zoe Petermans, Joe Wormsley, Jen Wood, Daniel Smith, Erin McNeese, Dylan Soyan and Leah Cameron. And a special mention that the nerves might rack up a little bit when we get to Daniel Smith, and that's uh, Hannah's here in the commentary position, his brother, and it can get a little bit tense. Yeah, always uh, nerve-wracking watching people you're close to. I know a lot of these athletes personally, but certainly watching my younger brother is going to be um, stressful. <laughs> Stressful indeed, six minutes uh, to observe these routes now, collective observation. And uh, Hannah, you've been in this position a few times, it's always quite an, an interesting process. No, oh, definitely. Observation's a really important part of the final for these competitors. They haven't seen these routes before until now, and they have only six minutes to memorize or read this route as much as they possibly can. That'll be um, looking for the hand sequence, the foot sequence, rest positions, um, where they're going to clip from, and any um, outstanding factors that they maybe want to watch out for on these routes. And they will also be talking to their fellow competitors about these things as well. Yeah, the guys are, are going to be on the left-hand side here, which starts with these blue and black volumes. Goes into a bit of a tricky jump out left, sort of a, not hard, but a slightly nerve-wracking jump before heading into 
big blue triangle section weaving the way up right through the the meat of this competition wall here it gets super steep at the top top of this route will be hold 43 to give you an idea of whereabouts this will be on the wall here and i've heard from the route setting team we're going to get a bit of a a bit of a word from them as this competition goes on um, but there could be some invert upside down action to finish if they get there which that could be, be really exciting super to see. exciting slightly terrifying um, um, the, the, the wall here hannah you're well used to climbing here so you're one of your local facilities it's 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 a fairly intimidating piece of kit yeah it's quite exposed this arena and um, the cameras don't particularly show it but the arena is massive and um, it's very airy there are big echoes from the music at the moment and um, so it's very exciting atmosphere but when you are on that wall all eyes really are on you and a lot of these climbers will be well versed in putting that to the back of their minds and focusing on their own climbing but for sure it can be a really intimidating environment so one thing to look out for just as it pans out of the screen there is on the men's route there's a uh, the lower third, just by the third quick draw, there's a compulsory clipping hold, which has got a big X next to the hold. And that is you have to clip that quick draw before moving past that move. So it's a big X, that means, yeah, the competitors will be well used to what that means, but you basically, it's a dyno out to the right, uh, to, out to the left, excuse me, but you do need to clip that before you start. Just the, the rope does run through all of the quick draws during the observation period so that the athletes know which ones are in, which ones are out. There are a couple of periphery routes on the wall here at the moment from the previous round it's kind of quite a hectic schedule here this weekend so these climbers in this lead final competed really late last night in the semi-finals which finished at around 9 p.m and um, so they've all gone home gone to bed and have been in isolation around nine o'clock this morning and um, so they've been in that bouldering room quite a while now but it should be fairly warm they also competed in the qualifying round yesterday morning, so within a 24-hour period have already climbed three competition routes, which is pretty tiring to say the least, um, but they'll all be trying to bring out their best efforts on these routes today. And these competition is obviously an event in its own right and there's British Championships on the line here, but Hannah, this does mean a little bit more than that in terms of GB selection as well. Yes, so this event is super important for a lot of these athletes. The podium position athletes at this event will be invited to the GB selection event next February, which will decide which athletes get to represent Great Britain at the 2024 international competitions. So a lot of these climbers have not pre-qualified for that event and so are really fighting for those podium positions today. And so today is actually going to be determining much of their next year of training. Yeah, do you think that will be playing in their minds at all here? For sure. Um, a lot of these athletes weren't competing internationally this year and so their whole year of training has been focused around this event and making sure that they qualify to go to that selection event for international competitions next year. A lot of these athletes were on the GB team this year as well um, but have not pre-qualified as I said so there is almost pressure on them to make sure they retain their space. Um, so yeah, a lot to fight for in this final and each athlete has their own personal um, goal I reckon must be very hard to make sure that you peak perfectly for the event right at the right at the right moment and um, yeah we'll see if that pressure starts to play out whether we see some nerves on the bottom end of the route essentially just until the climbers find their groove and you know get into their kind of climbing rhythm we we'll see a bit sort of over gripping a little not flowing quite as well as you might expect just due to those nerves but every athlete does seem to deal with it in a different way sometimes people find it an advantage sometimes it's a disadvantage I think these athletes will all be well practiced in sort of channeling those nerves into whatever form um, they perform best. Some athletes try to get really, really hyped up so that they can put their best performance in um, by trying really hard. Other athletes tend to try and relax themselves and climb smoothly and not put too much pressure onto themselves so they don't make mistakes. It's all personal preference, but most of these climbers have been in this position before. We do have a few youth climbers in this final. We've got Hannah Kerr and the women's, um, who's still a youth climber, but also two of the men, Finlay and uh, Dylan, who qualified in first, actually, um, are both youth climbers as well. So they're maybe not quite as experienced as some of these seniors, but will definitely have been in a finals position before in some youth events. So just to 
minute or two left of the observation period. Observation period wrapping up and the athletes will go back to the isolation zone. You can really feel the pressure really starting to mount here in the arena. It's a um, pretty decent crowd for this final. The last action of the weekend here at Raffo. Six men and six women to find our British champion over the next hour. We're going to be climbing, as far as I'm aware, male, female, male, male, female throughout this finals. So quite a decent wait for those who are coming out last. An opportunity really over an hour for the nerves really to build. So that observation might uh, be quite crucial. Always worth mentioning as well, the conditions in the arena are quite hot and humid, not as bad as it was yesterday, notably, when they were qualifying and in their semi-final round, but still a little bit warmer than a lot of these athletes will have been expecting for September in Edinburgh. Um, I did see a few people pulling up in their down jackets um, yesterday to qualification, but notably a lot of them left them at home today. So we are just waiting for our first athletes to be ready in the isolation zone. Six minutes to climb here in front of this crowd. With it being so tight from the semi-finals round, this one's really anybody's guess. Tricky routes and a quite a different style in many respects to what we've seen through the semi-final round, especially in the guys with a jump quite low down. Women's route massively complex in the middle. With a big green section in the middle of the wall there on those four volumes a sort of tricky section of hand flips going from right to left what an exciting stage set here for this um, British senior male and female final 43 moves in front of the guys for the top 51 for the women First climber out then, scored 36 plus in the semi-final round, a move and a half away from the top place. So it's Hannah Kerr who's going to get us up and running here. Hannah is um, fairly local to Edinburgh, she um, is from Whitburn which isn't too far away, um, so big cheer from her when she came out um, as a lot of the people in this crowd are friends and family so she'll get a lot of support in this final. Worth noting about Hannah, she is actually partially deaf um, and has started to speak about this a lot more on her Instagram and things like that. Um, it does affect her when she's climbing a little bit. Um, things like her balance and things are affected by this. It's not something she's been super outspoken about until recently, but I think it's given her a lot of confidence and she feels a lot more empowered by speaking about it these days. Yeah, she's looking totally stoked after her semi-final performance late last night really going out there with nothing to lose first athlete out we'll try and set an early high point little old school little crossover section there and sort of a lack of foothold in this next bit just really takes a bit of power out the arms early on no footholds out left where you really need them root set is just really starting to put a little bit of early force through the forearms Hannah looking really smooth though, she is quite an experienced competition climber, she has made semi-finals at the Youth World Championships before, um, this is one of her first major senior events, um, so she'll be really happy to be in the senior final, but certainly being a home favourite, um, I wouldn't discount her, she knows the wall well and she has got a lot of semi-final experience at youth level. Be really interesting to see if fatigue plays any part of this final as well after quite a late semi finals last night. Whether they've managed to recover over the uh, previous sort of 12 or so hours, decent sleep, hopefully get a bit of food and fuel on board. 
Now here we go with this tricky little section. That foothold that she's standing on, I've been informed, is a completely textureless little smear. Really tricky, powerful transition, but yeah, get, gets through it with ease. Yeah, Hannah looking really good there. I think that section she just came through was a little bit tricky, but she gets a good rest now to recompose herself and then push through these next few hard moves. Yeah, in a final like this, you can guarantee the route setters have put in a really stern section after this when the angle kicks back. If there's a decent rest like that, that means you've got a fair bit of hard moves to come. You can see her just looking up ahead of herself just now at some of the moves to come. She'll be re-familiarising herself with the moves that she read during the observation round and just getting herself ready to try really hard. So used around 2 minutes 30 of her 6 available minutes at the moment. Big shout of let's go from the crowd as she moves into this steep section now. It's going to be a lot of power endurance required through this next section. Some really awkward clipping positions. Really good effort there from Hannah. Being really composed while doing some of these big moves. Looking super relaxed actually, chalking up midway through this really overhanging section of the wall. Yeah, moving out to hold 32 at the moment, just stalling slightly now, not quite sure what to do on this next section. Out right, and then there's a left hand undercut right above the right hand that she's on at the moment. That's 32, 33 now. There's the left hand undercut starting to show signs of powering out slightly here. Snares up to the right hand, which would be 34, so that'll be 33 plus for Hannah. Yeah, looked a little bit frustrated with that. She did hesitate a little bit going towards that hold and just didn't quite get it right with her fingers. Um, I reckon she'll look back on this and still be pretty happy um, that she's in a senior final, but I think, yeah, she looks like she had a little bit more she wanted to give to that route. You see her looking up at the route again, watching where she fell off. Yeah, really good effort from Hannah. It definitely seems, though, when you get through that tricky volume traverse section, around the sixth quick draw there's a good rest but then you really need a good bunch of power endurance to get through the next three or four quick draws so we do start the men's competition now it's going to be Finley Kurzweil one of the younger athletes that Hannah you were talking about just earlier. Yes, Finn, another young climber. He's just in Youth A, so he is one of the youngest eligible competitors in this event. Um, we'll be super psyched to be in this men's final. Um, I was speaking to him just around his qualification, and he was pretty happy with that. So certainly to be making it through past semis, he'll be pretty chuffed, I imagine. Yeah, tricky actually, tricky little start of this men's competition. Sort of a, a nervy way to start the route with two... Um, sort of opposing volumes you have to just use your head a little bit and the root setters tend to do this these days just make a little bit of jeopardy right at the bottom of the wall just to um, check the level of nerves for the root setters uh, from the athletes yeah Finn is a very confident climber he loves a powerful move loves to give it a little bit of extra oomph when he's on the wall um, he's one of these climbers that definitely hypes himself up before a climb. So well, he will like this next move. Then does get that compulsory clipping hold and the clip done for this uh, jump from right to left here. First climber on the jump. No issues. Easy from Ben. A little bit of a showy move, but uh, didn't seem to overpower it either. Moves up into hold 14 straight away here from Finley. Ben will be aware that he is in a great position in this final because he can't lose any places and I do think that does change your mindset when you're on these routes especially if you're one of the less experienced climbers or the younger climbers and maybe don't have too much expectation for yourself and are happy to be there. He won't be worrying about risk taking or anything like that. He's here to try his absolute hardest as he really has nothing to lose. Yeah that section did look quite hard there into the right hand shoulder move and an undercut. It's found a nice little drop knee toe hook rest there really great composure into the next section now two pinches holds 20 and 21 just 
really building those feet. Really cheeky little sort of blocked left foothold there. Quite hard to use and a big stand up move here. Oh, really powerful hard. move from Finn there. Good effort. Finding a nice little rest there and before heading up into this next section, which is uh, through these big three pink volumes. Just struggling to reach that clip there. Um, taking out the rope and things and just not quite getting it in. I do wonder if he'll try that again or if he'll push on and try and do it from some of the next few holds. Definitely plays on your mind when you miss a clip. Was that the right decision or should I try something else? Moves out of the rest position now. Sloping volume for the right hand that's going to start to burn the forearms. Interesting, he was just searching around for his right hand there, just thought he saw a hole, but it was just some uh, chalk left over from a previous round. A little intermediate with the left now. Now he looks really tired. Been really trying hard on those last few moves, giving it everything he had. Um, that looked like he thoroughly enjoyed that route, I have to say. Yeah, good, really good battle there from Finley. Good show. The route definitely is kicking in after those pink volumes him breathing pretty heavily now that he's on the ground. So we are going to go female male all the way through this final round. With Joe Neem out next, one of the three climbers to qualify for this final who scored 36 plus in the semi-final last night. Same score as Hannah just before her. Here comes Joe, going 15. She's done a lot of competitions over the years, Hannah. It's good to see her back at the British League Championships. Yeah, Joe is a very, very experienced competitor. Actually, uh, one of the older competitors in this final as well. Um, has done a lot of IFSC comps at youth and senior level. So, yeah, expecting exciting things from Joe on this route. See her just taking a minute to read her route again, like some of the other climbers we've seen in this final. So, Joe, growing up in London, training at the walls throughout London. Great to see her back on the competition circuit with the comp vest on, trying hard. Joined by one of the route setters near here, now Dave Barons. Morning Dave, everyone. Yeah, it's been a long day so far. You guys had an incredibly late night last night, but um, nerves must be a little bit on edge with the final just underway here for the male and female seniors. Yeah, it's interesting to see them. Uh, obviously, we've watched them on three routes already, so we have a bit more of an idea of where they're operating and you know, say, uh, two in the morning finish for us last night. Yeah, never, never much fun, but um, it's been a great championship so far here. And we've got um, two incredible looking routes in front of us. Yeah, well, obviously the, route, the final routes are the first things we set, so we kind of pick all the best looking holds and try and make some interesting moves in there. And it must be tricky with the semi-final round and women's route in, in particular, just one one move essentially between the top six um, to try and separate that field. It's going to be it's going to be interesting. Yeah, the, these girls are all really close together. They're so hard to split. Um, hopefully, this one will do the job. Um, but we'll see. 
and this section that Joni was just working herself into here, sort of a tricky right to left section, a little bit of hesitation and a few bad footholds as well. Yeah, just something a, a little bit uncomfortable, not too hard, but just something to unsettle them a little bit and kind of get them a bit tense. Do you have to wonder if fatigue is going to play a part with semi-final quite late last night, uh, quite a long time in the isolation room as well? Yeah, that's always a factor. Um, I personally think it's harder doing a semi-final the night of a couple of rounds, but of qualification. But yeah, they still have to climb four routes in quite a short period of time. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. It's Joey Neal. She's sort of slightly hesitant through this initial sort of six or seven quick draws, but well, she'll be pretty happy with her style of climbing to get to a decent rest. And you guys have put in a rest here that's kind of okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> we say rest. Um, <laughs> It's uh, still probably quite a hard move for most of the climbing population, so that's the level these girls are at. It does seem to be like the route really ramps up after this section as well. Um, you sort of go into a much more of a power endurance phase in the mid middle of the wall. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's, you know, say, a lot of like, big holds kind of confusing, got to get them in the right places. Uh, a few jibs screwed in there as well just to increase the accuracy. Joni does work her way into that initial section of the power endurance element of this route. Jo is such an experienced competitor, she shouldn't be too phased by this next section, hopefully. Yeah, she's going to want to climb as efficiently as she can through this section, because obviously there's a, a big pile of steep up there. There's a whole world of steep up there. <laughs> it's what we're used to here at Rafa, but it starts to get a little bit more explosive here and the crowd responds. Mm -hmm in kind yeah, it looks like she's trying to starting to uh, dig in a little bit now starting to fight the pump this is where we saw Hannah the previous climber start to stall out slightly into the left yeah. hand undercut and then this next it's move for the a new bit of a, a blind stab into a, a bit of a slot crimp Joe goes for it and does stick it. Nicely done. So a new high point on the women's final. Oh, just lost Joe there. Oh, she lost the foot. <laughs> Slightly disappointing from Joe there. She was starting to look a little bit more comfortable at the end of that section, but does ultimately slip. So it's a good effort from Joe. Yeah, I think Joe would have wanted to go much higher there. She'd be slightly disappointed with that, I think. Yeah, just around hold 34, 35 up there for Joe. Four more climbers to come in the women's final. Five more in the men's. As Root says, Dave, you obviously started, I think it was Tuesday. Yeah, we, Tuesday we, we got up here. <laughs> we're now on Sunday. Um, but we don't get to see these athletes on big lead walls that often. It must be tricky to kind of get the level initially. Yeah, we don't have many, too many big long lead walls in the UK so it's uh, a lot of us are sh kind of very short and very bouldery so yeah for these guys to adapt to this more endurance style it's it's tricky and tricky for us to get the level right but overall um, you've got a fairly decent sized team here have been pretty happy with the weekend yeah like uh, maybe a few more tops in the semi-final would have been nice but like the boots worked and started to split the field out so yeah, definitely. With, with, it is tricky, no doubt, with power climbing, veteran, and the open categories as well. There's a, there's a lot going on as Sam Butterworth joins us on the stage. Sam's looking really solid in the semi final round last night. He was yeah, he's so strong, Sam. Like, really strong in the fingers. Yeah, somebody who we've seen at the British Championships for bouldering as well. Finger, finger strength isn't going to help you on this first move, but. Yeah, this first <laughs> move. Just talk us through this first move then, Dave. Uh, it's just a little uncomfortable run on into a groove. Um, it's not too hard, but it's, again, just one of those unsettling things that it's out of your control, so. The root are just not nice people, are they? <laughs> We're bad men. <laughs> and women. <laughs> You're naughty. That first move is really cheeky, and it's just that push on into the okay, groove. Yeah. Just fully commit to it, hard as you can. Then it's fine. But <laughs> it's, there's like 10 seconds of panic at the bottom, and then just go for it and hope yeah. for the best. And deep breath, and hope you don't fall off before the hold number one. Because that sums up lead climbing at the minute. Is uh, just embrace the uncomfortable. <laughs> oh yeah, 
heard it here. Let's see how Sam Butterworth gets on then. So st steady a bit leading into this another uncomfortable move. <laughs> yeah, the style of routes has definitely changed over the years from sort of comfortable crimping and maximum endurance to powerful moves, a few jumps, a bit of circus in there as well. And the crowd does seem to like the, the change in style. Yeah, it's uh, certainly a little bit more showy. Um, as impressive as watching someone endurance away with a pile of crimps is to people that climb, to the non-climbing public, it just doesn't look very exciting. Six minute time limit on these routes. Um, some of the routes was up to 60 moves yesterday. Uh, on the left-hand side of this wall, Dave. Uh, not quite so much today, 43.51 here. Uh, yeah, a little Gaffrey. bit shorter on this one. Do you have to factor the time into into this, or do you just kind of let them get on with it? Uh, we just let them get on with it. We'll generally make the start of the route a little bit quicker. Um, and kind of make sure mo most of the moves aren't too slow. But Yeah, it's not something that's slightly out of your control as route setters. This next move looks pretty, pretty tricky. Round holds 20.21. Yeah, this is kind of the first kind of real hard move on this on this route. Kind of nasty little hidden foothold on the volume, which is really good when you find it. But yeah, just kind of really that, like hard throw over. Just like, sticks that left hand. Sort of saw from Finley as well. A lot like, of power required to stick that left hand. Yeah, you can't. Well, I say you can't do that move static. I wait to be proven wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> and a load of big open-handed slopers. And you have to choose the wall angle here at Raffo as well opted to go for something not in its maximum steepness no when it's when it's maximum steep you end up down climbing <laughs> going downhill at the end so. so really good effort here from sam butterworth starting to show a little bit of fatigue on those big sloping pink volumes a little bit happier now he's got it's like a decent yeah. in cut in his left hand but coming up to the move now where finley dropped moving into this yeah, next right person. hand undercut Finley went for a right toe hook, but nicely done from Sam using the right heel. Yeah, there's a few options around that you can do, like toe hook on the blue like Finley did, or heel or toe in the on the pink. Good work to get that. Yeah, he's, that he's read, that, read that well. That's the easiest place to do that clip. <laughs> Punching up into the top third now here from Sam. Yeah, you've got to really keep squeezing with the feet through this section. So steep up there, big compression, nice little left toe hook, drop knee. Really nice little one wind move there as well. Yeah. Big big Superman release coming up here. <laughs> oh yes, good work from Sam. Oh, and does drop. Looks like a fantastic route, Dave. I'll let you go and enjoy the rest yeah. of the finals. And um, yeah, good luck and hopefully we get a good result. Well, thanks, Mike. Superb effort from Sam, gives us an insight to the top section of this route. Immensely powerful up there. And Hannah back in the commentary box here, that was a big show from Sam. Yeah, watching Sam, um, really, really impressive. The crowd in this arena, so behind him as well. Um, that cut loose was incredible. Would have been amazing if he'd actually managed to um, pull through after that, but Certainly an amazing climb from Sam. I think he'll be pretty pleased with that too. Yeah, I think that's going to be a pretty tough high point to beat as well. So yeah, good performance from Sam. Both of these routes really ramping up in that middle section. Um, both climbers, very, very good climbers and looking very, very tired and that they had to try super hard. So it'll be really interesting to see how the rest of the competitors get on in this final. Zoe Peterman's then out next the last of the three climbers to score 36 plus who got through to this final in the semi-final yesterday Zoe a fierce competitor really tries hard yeah I think Zoe was a little bit disappointed with her semi-final performance 
yesterday. I think she wanted a bit more than that, so she'll be coming into this final with a lot to give and really trying to improve her position. So Zoe's six minutes is underway. Zoe is a very um, dominant lead specialist. She loves to tell everybody that she's much happier on a rope than she is on a boulder. She has done really well in a lot of bouldering events as well. She was in the finals of the British Bouldering Championships last year um, and ended up with an amazing performance in there. But um, yeah, definitely at home on a rope. Absolutely loves lead climbing and is a huge advocate for it. Yeah, that's good to hear, especially when we see so many bouldering centres opening around the country. Lead climbing can feel like it's getting left behind occasionally, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely not here at Raffo. We'll see how she works through this next section. We've seen a couple of the previous athletes just slowing down slightly here, trying to figure out this next move. Double undercut and roll up. Have to hold 18. Good confidence showing there from Zoe. Yeah, Zoe just taking her time through this first half of the route. Um, definitely not climbing super quickly, but um, is making sure she doesn't make any mistakes so that she has all to give in this top section of the route. She'll be getting a good rest after these moves anyway. Yeah, really nice section of moves here. Powerful undercut section. Quite bad feet. There's the rest position you're talking about, Hannah. Dave Barron's one of the route setters here just describing that sort of looks like quite a positive rest but it's actually pretty bad in terms of the quality of the handholds. Using the inside flag there just to adjust the body weight. Weight over the feet and push pushes on now. Almost a knee bar there, a bit of a knee drag under that volume. mistakes so far on the route really clean super pushing clipping now still taking a time even through this tricky section making sure that she composes herself uh, doesn't make any risky decisions um, but yeah coming into the real meat of the route now yeah slight hesitation there just trying to figure out this next move route set's describing this is a bit of a blocked crimp snares it with the front three fingers to begin with really dragging that open-handed crimp Pushing for a high point here, Zoe. Good work so far. Yes, that's nice. Up into hold 36 now, Zoe Petermans. Approaching the very upper section of this huge lead wall here at Raffo. Yeah, so Zoe only has a couple more moves before she'll be into the roof section of this wall where the climbing will dramatically change. Um, you'll see her using different techniques and things to combat the really overhanging nature of this top section of the wall. Looking like she's getting something back though in this rest position. Yeah, left left arm slightly bent, but just enough on that left hand sort of sloping jug to get a little bit of a rest. I heard that there's another rest coming up as well. She can power through the next three or four moves, then it gets super interesting after that. So right arm and elbow just lifting slightly here for Zoe, but she's pushing through. Root set said you can get a little bit back here if you choose. So just powering through front on. There was talk that that could be potentially be an invert section there, but not for Zoe. Certainly very exciting to finish here. Zoe Peterman's putting on an incredible high point here at the British 
lead finals two big undercuts now and the world's biggest volume above her Zoe Peatman's putting in the fight of her life now goes for the double jump at the top holds her head in her hands it was a superb fight from Zoe yeah incredible climbing there that jump move that she just came off looking actually really intimidating and um, it looked like she was going to try and go with the heel in and then decided that no she had to jump and just missed the hold and um, looks a little bit disappointed with her performance there but yeah I thought that was some really strong climbing really impressive climbing from Zoe and I think she knows that that is a good performance she just when she came down holding her head in the hand she, she knew that if she stuck that move let's have another look just about wriggles the left toe into the pocket there and then just a little touch hesitant where to put the right foot and this honestly on screen there it doesn't look so bad but it's one of the most intimidating positions I've ever seen on a route 15 meters up and backwards yeah, yeah so that jump isn't just upwards it is maybe a meter or so backwards as well so there's a lot going on in that move and um, but a really good fight from Zoe really big effort putting pressure on the other competitors as well just trying to read the body language there it's hard to tell from Zoe whether she knows that the route is definitely toppable I think she's very very hard on herself she'll have been trying to top for her own self-satisfaction not just to win um, but yeah she will know that the semi-finals were really tight and there are definitely climbers that are capable of putting in really strong performances coming up focus switches back to the men's competition then wearing 38 Diane Actor, someone who's been really good on the bouldering wall in recent years. Yeah, so Diane was European Youth Bouldering Champion last year. Um, very happy on a big slopey hold and some powerful moves. Um, this route definitely has a lot of them, so we'll see how he gets on. I actually get really nervous watching the first move on this with the run into the double press. It's um, yeah, it's quite hard to watch. It would be a climber's worst nightmare to fall off before you've even managed to get the first quick draw in, but I think these climbers are fairly used to seeing a kind of dynamic run-on move at the start of routes now, and I'd be surprised if they weren't quite well practiced in them. They also, I think, psychologically know that the route setters tend to put those moves in to just give them a little bit of intimidation, but generally speaking, they're not too difficult for them. Let's see how Diane gets on this next jump. We've seen no issues at all, really, from all the guys who've been on that move so far. No, really confident from Diane there. I don't think he'll have been too worried about that move, to be honest. Um, definitely making light work of some of these holds as well. Route setters are putting a number of tow hooks on this route. We're seeing that so much now with these modern large features on volumes. A lot of tension coming through tow drags and heel hooks. A lot of squeezing in the legs, squeezing in the hips. I think it's making it a lot more difficult for the climbers to read these moves in observation as well because it really is full body movement. Um, it's not just thinking about the hands, the foot positions are super important as well. And with all these massive holds on the wall, there's a lot of scope for where you should put your foot on that massive hold. And it requires them to be really precise, but also really confident with what they choose to do while they're climbing. A really fierce roll over there. And they made the previous move look quite easy. A little bit of height advantage on that move to the two pinches, but then looks super bunched, rolling up to the hold that is now having a little rest on. Definitely swings and roundabouts when it comes to the height on these lead routes. No, certainly. I know that Daniel, my brother, is six foot two, but there are climbers that are a lot shorter than that. So the route setters have to cater for all heights, and there will be certain moves that suit uh, the varying ends of the spectrum. Really, another another really tensiony left heel hook move there. Just highlighting what I was saying about the tension throughout the legs on these routes. Into a really powerful section now. This is the area of the route where Finley got to our first climb around and fell off on this next move. Sam Butterworth 
and quite a number of moves above that and this next clip looks really tricky. Diane looking super solid up until this point, definitely confident on these moves, on these big holds. Um, but yeah, I think the route is about to ramp up for him, so we'll see how he gets on. Trying a little bit harder now by the looks of things too. Yes, yeah, it's a really nice set, bouldery section coming up, a big unwind. Full power there from Diane and powers out. Really good effort. Really stretched out position there for him. Um, I think he'd be pretty happy with that, but certainly it looked pretty tired. three climbers down in each of these categories we are halfway through the senior British Championships lead finals feels Mike like Langley. it's gone pretty quickly hasn't it yeah Mike Langley and Hannah Smith here in the commentary position Hannah a previous winner of these events here giving us all the lowdown from the competitors point of view back to the women's route it's going to be the legend that is Jen Woods first climber from the semi-final round to score 37 so half a move above the previous three athletes Jen putting in some pretty serious training recently yeah so Jen is one of the climbers that is really training for this event to get to go to that GB selection next year um, she has a lot of lead climbing experience but has particularly as you say been putting in the work these past few months and it definitely showed in yesterday's semi-final she looked incredible on the route and was unlucky not to be able to get the plus on um, hold number 37 Jen has been doing these events for a very long time. She's probably done more British League Climbing Championships than any of the other competitors in this final. Um, she's also a climbing coach. Um, she writes training plans for a lot of young competition climbers these days. Um, so she's very um, knowledgeable about climbing strength and movement and will have been getting a lot of really good training in herself um, over the past few months. She'll be out there to inspire some of her athletes as well, no doubt. Absolutely, so I imagine. It's not just all talk. She's got, <laughs> she's got, it, got the moves to back it up. I think as an athlete, it must be really encouraging to see your coach climbing really hard. You know that what they're telling you is definitely valid. Um, but no, Jen's a, a really good climbing coach and a lot of young climbers really look up to her. So just as Jen works her way through this bottom section, looking really composed to bring in another one of the main players of the organising team here, one of our route setters, Zoe. Zoe, again, a long weekend of route setting, but a great final so far. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm happy to see that kind of like, we've like, well, A, that there's been lots of lots of climbing going on and then and then a bit of a split as, as, as they get higher. It's really hard to tell from Zoe's body language when she walked off uh, score around 47 plus going for that double jump that's really close to the last move on the route you guys must be a little bit on the edge of your seats yeah I mean <laughs> definitely got some sweaty palms going on um, but that's you know when you when you're trying to cut it fine to see like we want to get people as high as possible but also get a split um, and like yeah kind of she was so close so close to to, to getting that as well we were just describing that's possibly one of the most intimidating moves I've ever seen on a uh, lead route. Yeah. Must yeah, have, yeah, yeah. How, how was it for you when you're, when you're <laughs> testing it up there? Everything about that move, from getting the volume into the position of where it is, and then, <laughs> and 
and then orchestrating it to make yourself do it was just like such <laughs> mentally and physically hard work. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty it's a pretty mad position to be to be heading for. But um, we focus back on Jen. She's looking super composed through this middle section, offering that sort of half decent rest just before, and then it seems to really ramp up in this next bit. Yeah, yeah, we kind of with this route. It's definitely like I think compared to the others, a bit more intricate. But there are more rests thrown in, so we've tried to kind of give them like a few chances to like get some stuff back so that they can give a proper fight kind of later into the roof like we wanted like wanted to really get them so that they can enter that section with some like fight left in their forearms seems to be working so far but this next move coming up after the left hand undercut it seems to be a slight separator move they've really got to engage the bicep on the left hand undercut and that sort of slightly blocked crimp on the next volume yeah 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 exactly kind of and if, if you can if you can keep it together through this bit and like keep the pump at bay you, you do get a bit of a shake out afterwards Oh, just just snared it front three fingers there get opted to keep the feet a little bit low from Jenwood there you can see her right arm's really hurting oh, she now is, she's in fight mode now look at that elbow go on Jen full battle here for yeah. Jen that moves really hurt her chances oh. and does fall she was looking so smooth up to that as well really tough for Jenwood that's going to really affect her chances for this GB selection I think she's going to be absolutely gutted about that Around 35 plus for her on that one. That's going to be going to be touch and go. We will move on to back into the men's side. Joe Wormsley, and we're seeing high points on the men's competition already as well, Zoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're definitely uh, happy to see that there haven't been any slips so far on that on that first move. There was a lot of discussion about that on the team as to whether as to whether that was like treading too closely to the line of risky but so far it's been all right yeah i actually got my eyes closed until they get to the first quick draw to be honest can't, can't bear to watch it <laughs> that's what we do <laughs> luckily the competitors don't but it's a really tricky little coordination move just to get off the ground it's one of those classic ones where it's like if you kind of half commit and like don't stand up fully or don't like engage the shoulders then it you know it's just just feels feels like that's what I did the first game it felt horrible it kind of feels like you're falling out of it even when you're on the wall so it looks like Joe's trying to initially it looks like he's going to walk into it but he might have to just sort of do a couple of steps up into it he's a slightly taller climber heart in your mouth moment here yeah, for definitely. Joe nice smooth in, easy in the yeah. end yeah 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 A little shake of the head there, just sort of early <laughs> nerves. Just he's just happy to be on the wall and <laughs> trying to find his rhythm. Yeah, that was a definitely like, okay, we're on, let's go. <laughs> but you have only offered them three or four moves before he got another sort of ch cheeky little jump. It's not not particularly hard, but just another little one just to focus the mind slightly. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they don't get they don't get to just like sit back and climb for a bit. Dave Barons was describing it as embracing the uncomfortable this route <laughs> we did screw I think they screwed a little jib onto the inside of the, the one you're jumping off as well just to really like get as much out of it as you can definitely a slightly different style to the semi-finals routes which seem to be a little bit more endurance based these are kind of got these really technical sections and a lot of tensiony footwork required as well yeah yeah exactly kind of like yeah for, for, for kind of both the other other rounds we kind of like a lot of like just kind of sustained climbing playing on pump seeing you know just really kind of like want to test them see how fit they are and then for finals it's like kind of we can involve more risky moves more moves where they kind of really test some like slightly more different techniques yeah, great show so far two climbers left in each category it's really going to come right down to the wire this one it's really fun setting finals i do feel like it's 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 um it's nice to be able to play 
play around with that element of risk a little bit more. Yeah, Joe having a big risk there. Yeah, not, to yeah. not, not to use the blocked left foothold. He still hasn't seen it or hasn't used it. But we saw Finley Kurzweil using this rest as well. It looks like he absolutely desperately needs it at this stage in the route. Yeah, you can see those elbows going up slightly. Yeah, one of the first really hard moves on the route there, rolling over to that hold and he, didn't, he grabbed it sort of really uncomfortably. Just hopefully he's got the ability to, to get something back now. a playoff as well between like kind of marginal rests like that where you're like how long do I stay here is it actually just going to make me more pumped such an individual preference yeah he seems to be he seems to be looking kind of fairly good on it though opting for the three finger drag on the left hand to try and rest it's not it's definitely not a joke that no no Resting on hold number 22, 43 is the top here, so he does push on now. Decides enough is enough on the rest, time to get on with it. This is the bit of wall angle as well I find that just really zaps your forearms, like there's something about just suddenly hitting this that you're like, okay, I am now racing, Got racing the pump. A little bit oh. greedy, greedy with the left hand on that volume as well, yeah. and it does seem to be just trying to follow the chalk up and yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that chalk mark was left over from a hop, like right at the top was left over from a hold we put on before potentially hurt him a little bit coming out of that rest straight into a root reading mistake yeah see this next really hard move opting for the right heel and the big release will this work for him hard oh. chop into the undercut change there it is opts to reduce the swing by bringing the right foot in before pushing on Tenuous clip there. Real nice. fight here from Joe. Yeah, he's been fighting for a while now. I'm super impressed. Come on, Joe. Oh, really big nice. effort there from Joe. Wong. Yeah. He looked pumped quite early, but really pushed on. Superb fight. Uh, good effort from Joe. Erin McNeese will be out next in the women's and. So I'll let you go and enjoy the rest of your hard work and <laughs> enjoy the rest of the final. Thank you. what a fight that was from Joe really inspiring to see sort of early trouble on the route around hold 20 but pushing on to around hold 34 I think it was in the end of a yeah, proper battle in endurance yeah really good fight from Joe there came off with a bit of a scream so he's definitely trying his hardest and that section of the route with that toe hook in uh, definitely emerging as the hard section of this men's route Erin McNeese then one of the favourites going into this one pressure really on after an absolutely amazing performance from Zoe Petermans. Two climbers before her, hitting a really big high point. Yeah, Erin again, another climber that tends to be very much her against the wall. Um, she'll be coming out wanting to top this route as much as she would love to be British champion, I'm sure. Her eyes will be set solely on the top chain of this route. Um, so she will be climbing these early moves um, to conserve energy and prepare for a fight later on. We did see her make a few errors in the semi-final yesterday, quite low down, she recovered fine, but did wonder if that was her mental game getting to her a little bit, as she is one of the favourites, she does have a slight target on her back and also has very high expectations of herself. Yeah, has competed internationally just recently, so obviously on in good form. But uh, must be must be hard coming out as one of the favourites. Absolutely, she has also had a very long season. Um, she's been competing in youth competitions, senior competitions, um, both internationally and nationally. So, yeah, this is her last competition of the year, I imagine. Certainly, her last national event. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if fatigue is a factor for her as well, whereas a lot of these other competitors are a little bit more fresh, um, as they haven't maybe been doing quite as many international competitions. It's 
these competitors are in the isolation zone but they can probably tell how long roughly the athlete before them is on the wall so they'll have a pretty good idea that they've got a long way to go up this wall to, to get into those podium spots. Showing comfort and composure through that sort of traverse from right to left there so far, Erin. Yeah, Erin looking a lot more comfortable than she did in last night's semi-final, I'd say. Definitely climbing smoother, not making mistakes. Um, she looks happy, I'd say, on this route at the moment. Seems to fit into that rest position quite well as well. She's got the ability to have a slightly bent leg where we saw Zoe quite stretched in that rest. Yeah, I'm not sure how tall Erin is. She's not super tall, but I would say she is one of the slightly taller competitors. Might play a factor into how she climbs this route. crowd waits with slight anticipation as we move into this first really hard section on the route. Moving past this right hand green pinch and then the left hand undercut and the move up to hold 34 is really where we start to see a lot of problems. Hannah, Hannah Joe and Jen all struggling around that area. Erin will be able to tell how she's getting on on this route by the crowd's reaction. We saw when Hannah was climbing, the crowd were cheering most of the way up the route because they didn't know where the hard sections were. But now we've seen every climber fairly comfortably get to this point. Erin hasn't had an awful lot of cheering yet, but it will start to ramp up now. Oh, she does stick it, but it looked hard. Really hard move. So we sort of Jen fall off, but still manages to push past. So she'll be able to rest slightly in this next section does look fairly relaxed still isn't showing too many signs of fatigue whereas Zoe at this point took a really long rest on these holds and it looked like it really helped her get those few extra moves in see Erin looking round as if to look at the clock see how much time she's got definitely what you're saying about the crowd being quiet when they know that the climber's still got a little way to go you can definitely sense that now Erin can sense it as well pushing on into the next angle change then Erin McNeese looking for a place on the podium here if not the win what method will she choose through this next section suggestion you could go feet first she opts to camps it out takes a huge swing at the top of the wall oh my god look at the power the one arm lock off at the top really impressive from Erin there that was a bit of a crowd pleaser that move that was insane right at the top of the wall here. Does it mean that she's got power still to burn? The heart in the mouth jump coming up now. Drops it, fumbled both of the holds. Same place as Zoe Peterman. She looked fresh up there as well. Yeah, she did look round just before she jumped. Um, I'm not sure she really gave herself enough time to eye up those two holds. Um, I'm not sure if she was short on time and therefore trying to rush it a little bit. Um, she did look fresh going into that move though, so I do think that that was more of a mistake than exhaustion. But I'd love, to see that. love to see that again. She will still provisionally be in first place. Yeah, though. this is the crazy lock-off move where she just sort of just pulled into that and just decided to do a one-armour lock-off, mm -hmm. which is fairly mental on its own right. And then into this next section, yeah, like you said, Hannah, she just looked around once she got the two undercuts. And when she actually jumped for the hold, it almost seemed to go past the, the two ring jugs. But it's obviously slightly blind, especially the left one. Let's have another look. Yeah, yeah just missed those left holds. Hand. Yeah, left hand fired straight past the jug, went too far. Competition continues, though, with your sibling, Hannah, Daniel Smith, trying to take away a British title here. Daniel, very quick to get onto the wall. I know that he trains on this uh, wall all the time. He'll know that the hard sections are generally a bit higher up and he has been working on his pacing a little bit. So he is definitely climbing quickly through these first few moves. So 
competitor yourself. You've been through all the different emotions, and this is going to be a slightly different one now as your brother starts his big fight in the final. Oh, nicely. Doesn't even jump across, just gives it, gives it a powerful shoulder press. Daniel is a tall climber, and um, he has a very large appendix as well. He's got very long arms, and he does like to make use of that where he can to minimize risk on moves like that, um, although he is quite confident on a jump himself. So, yeah, definitely making use of his arms there. Yeah, the next section moving from holds 21 into 22. We've seen quite a few battles there, and I think that could be quite hard as a taller climber, so we'll see few moves time he's got a fierce little crimpy section to get through here with this tricky right toe hook this next move then looks hard if you're tall Just get it done. I can breathe. <laughs> I was worried about that move. I have to say, Daniel is prone to getting really bunched up with his long arms and long legs, but please, he's managed to work through that move with minimal stress, <laughs> at least for him. <laughs> Not for us. Looking pretty comfortable on that large first pink sloping volume. Just using that technical left heel hook to Gain a little bit of back in the forearms. Moving quickly now. Pump clearly starting to kick in. What method will he choose to use here for this hard undercut move? Interesting, managed to keep his feet quite low. This is a tricky clip, this next one. Trying to get a knee bar of some sort in there, I think, but I'm not convinced he's got quite long enough legs to do it. Yeah, it does go for the conventional right heel hook method for the clip, and he's still looking good here, Daniel Smith. But ultimate climber in this men's British lead final. Couple more moves to try and set a new high point. Really cool cross under move there actually from Daniel. Can he hold this swing and make the next move to set a high point? Looking tired, it does come off. Yeah, it just pops off of that really, like he was trying really hard to be fair, but I'm pretty sure he will be happy with that. I know I am. <laughs> happy for him and happy it's also over. There's a good, really good fight there. It's going to be a very similar score to Sam Butterworth's position as well, around hold 36. One more climber to come in both categories, including this lead finals. And that will mean the current top two climbers of both of these finals will be guaranteed podium positions, subject to appeals. Um, so that will be Daniel and Sam and Zoe and Erin. Final climber out in the women's competition then. Outlast, maximum pressure, it's Fear Cameron. Can we see a top here on the women's route? Solid crowd here, all sort of waiting nervously for Fear to make her way through. It's a whole pile of hard moves to hopefully get up into this jump section. You must know Fear quite well, Hannah. How do you think she'll deal with this environment? I think Fear's a very experienced climber. Um, she doesn't tend to give too much away emotionally, so I imagine that she won't be letting this get to her too much. She's very relaxed, very confident mover on the wall. Um, seems to be climbing very well so I think she's got a really good chance of doing some really hard climbing on this route.
definitely easy for us to sit here and say we're looking forward to seeing her on the upper sections of the wall, but there's a whole load of moves to get through. We need to make sure we don't make too many mistakes to remain fresh. One of those tricky little early sections here now. The foothold she's standing on is completely no textured on the left foot. It's a screw on, but all the texture's been sanded off by the root setters. That's a bunch they are. Very generous of them. <laughs> they are moving quickly away from that rest position. Obviously feels pretty good. We saw her do the same thing in semi-finals yesterday where she bypassed quite a few of the resting positions in favour of pushing on with her climbing. Um, so it seems to be something that she is doing purposefully, rather than not realising that she should be resting. This is the next position there, it's sort of really hard in your mouth to watch from a spectating point of view as she moves through these next two holes and goes to this really blocked right hand hole. Let's see how she gets on with this move. Just fumbled it slightly there, almost a root reading area, but instantly corrected it. Definitely looking like she's having to try a little bit harder now, getting that clip in. I know that hold isn't great, um, but let's see how she gets on on these next few moves as she starts to regain composure a little bit. Big slip there, but just about held it, Fear. Just all of a sudden starts motoring into this next next section. A couple of little mistakes in the midsection there, but maybe she can recover here. Final climber out, who will be decided British champion over the next minute or so we will find out into the final section of this route then Fear Cam Cameron fumbled that hold slightly but makes an adjustment that's needed quick rest before powering through it. Interestingly rolling over with the right hand here. Different sequence we've seen all together. Right arm elbows are really out now. And does drop. A slight root reading error potentially at the top of the root there that we've seen completely different. It's not what the root set has intended. None of the sequence were intended up there that we've seen but it is a fantastic effort from fear but she's going to be third place likely for her and Erin McNeese will take this one away. Yeah a fair few mistakes from Thea there I think it would be fair to say I don't think that was her best climbing she did really well to get that high having had a few slips that definitely could have thrown her um, but she got that podium position and I'm fairly certain that she'll be quite happy to at least have that. Final climber of the day then Dylan Thoy in the final person in the men's category. Dylan being a very young climber as well, again one of our youth competitors, qualified in first for this final so really impressive from him. Um, also seemed quite dissatisfied with his climbing yesterday as well so definitely pushing for more, it's not all about the position for him, it's definitely about his own personal climbing and how he, feel he, cli he feels he climbs. Wasting no time getting into the meat of this route with this jump. Executed really nicely by him as well, looking fairly relaxed. Yeah, really nicely done. Crowd, crowd definitely watching up in anticipation now. I'd like to see someone on the last couple of moves here. It's very tight this one as well. Both categories so close. Daniel and Sam neck and neck at the moment let's see what Dylan can do can he upset the apple cart here and go a move higher making the most of that rest there just before this slightly bunchy section I think he might fit into this next move a little bit easier into the box as we say that left foot on roll over yeah 
making that move look fairly easy. Yeah, showing good, good flick, good hip flexibility. Tell it's uh, been a long weekend. <laughs> clip from really low there we've seen Daniel especially using that next volume to take a good rest but a couple of the other competitors deciding this is the better rest position and just the left foot currently not on the volume just smearing on the wall itself and now pushes through out of that rest wasn't a great resting position Entirely calm to win this midsection at the moment. Starts to change in style. A little bit more physical. Big cut loose there. Big smash into that right hand undercut using the right heel. Now Dylan definitely looking like he's starting to try a bit harder now. Um, made use of that rest, but as you say, I do wonder if he may have missed the best one. Final few moves then of this British Championships 2023. Can Dylan get through this next section? He's looking a pretty stretched on the right heel hook at the moment. Oh, just fumbles it slightly and drops. Dylan Swin is not going to be troubling the top step of the podium at this championship. It does look like it could go to Daniel Smith. Yeah, that was really unlucky from Dylan there, I think. I think he just missed one of the screw-ons on that pink volume. And had he have gotten that first time, maybe would have been able to pull that back because those volumes are really bad in that overhanging section of the wall as well. So they're not very forgiving. Um, but a really good climb from him. I'm not sure he'll be very happy um, with that. I think he'll be a bit disappointed. But yeah, I think he'll still be um, fairly pleased with his overall weekend of climbing. Yeah, and what a great championship it has been. Rafa done an amazing job here alongside the MC and GB Climbing to put on a, a great championship, great routes all throughout this uh, competition. Do stick with us. We will bring you the podium as soon as it's ready. Final words, Hannah, before uh, we wrap this one up, ready for the podium? Um, a very long weekend for a lot of these climbers, I think, but... I thought the routes were incredible, really great job to all the volunteers that have helped this event run and I've thoroughly enjoyed getting to watch all the climbing this weekend. Yeah, it has been great. It's great to see the strength of lead, cli lead climbing in this country along with speed climbing that we saw uh, Friday through the qualification and the finals on Saturday night. It's been an absolutely brilliant weekend. Stick with us, we will be uh, live streaming the podium presentation. I think. Hannah right next to me might be getting fairly excited for her brother in a few minutes time um, but for now thank you so much for watching and we'll join you for the presentation.
ice ready. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hold it. Come on. Yes. <laughs> if I'm setting a comp, the first thing you do is you choose your holds. Um, and having good holds, stuff that is inspiring, stuff that is different, that doesn't look the same as everybody else's, is always the key thing so a set as if there's something new there's something exciting something we haven't seen before something that we haven't played with that we want to experiment with then that's that's kind of what inspires us you could say like a root set is like a conductor with an orchestra and they've got lots of different stuff they've got a climbing wall they've got holds and volumes and the idea is to bring it all together to make to make something which is which is beautiful I think I joined the BMC when I was about 11 years old, um, so I could compete for or try to compete for GB and enter all my regional um, competitions that I was so excited to do. Uh, I also think the BMC could improve EDI by uh, making climbing more accessible for all sorts of people, for example families from with low income or people in the city who just don't have access to the outdoors or don't see it as a place for them. The BMC ensures that we can all have access to climbing crags across the country and that everyone using them is looking after them. They're clean and the rock is in good quality, so that's really important to me as an outdoor climber. And then for competitions, they ensure that I can get away and actually be insured whilst I'm competing, which not many insurance companies actually do, so that's really important to me. And lastly, they are really keen on promoting diversity within climbing and it's so nice to work with an organisation that shares the same passions as I do and has the same ideals and visions for where climbing should be. I hope as a BMC ambassador I'm able to be a role model for those people who might not see themselves um, looking the same as other people within the climbing community. So hopefully I'll be able to reach a new audience for the BMC but also speak to their climbers who've been going for a long time. I think climbing has changed already quite a lot because of the Olympics. Um, there are loads more climbing walls in the across the country and also I think the style is changing so that even the easier boulders are a lot more fun and interesting and more like comp style so people can really have a go at what they've seen in the Olympics at their local gym. Lots of people consider the outdoors as a free space that's open to everyone. But for a lot of people, it really doesn't feel that way. So we've brought you here today to find out one thing. Is the outdoors an equal space? Take three steps forward if you have no soul care responsibilities. I found it really difficult to get my kids outdoors because I can't afford the equipment for them. Take three steps forward if you have access to a vehicle. I have to rely on the unreliable public transport. Take three steps forward if you've never had a disability or a long-standing health problem. If you've always been able to afford to access the outdoors. When I went on one of my first treks, I did not have like the right equipment. The sole carer of four children, um, I found it really difficult to get my kids outdoors because um, I can't afford the equipment for them. My aunties and uncles, they split and bought, I don't know how much it costs, but um, it's Gore-Tex, I'm guessing it's quite expensive. They split and bought it for me as a gift. If getting outdoors has always been part of your family or community life, Yes, yeah, so I know through my parents, I've had to have other people 
influence me to go out and things like that. My mom, she's really into the countryside and everything, so she <laughs> she always took us out. If you don't have that connection, if you don't have someone who show you out there or take you, how do you, how are you gonna find out about it? Take three steps forward if you've never struggled from a mental health condition. Take three steps forward if you always see people like you in the outdoors. Sometimes I'm the only black person in the outdoors and when I go climbing most people often ask the question you're a climber. Like when I go outside I don't see people that day. Take three steps forward. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you.